This portion of Kingston Community Radio is brought to you by Ulster Savings Bank. Visit their newest branch, conveniently located at the Ulster Commons Plaza in Lake Katrine. Experience the difference that local community banking offers with the convenience of another great location, easy access, plenty of parking, and a 24-hour ATM. Ulster Savings Bank, invested in community, invested in you. Member FDIC. Flash and me. Uh, what are you? You're, I don't. <laughs> don't yeah, you, I'm, that's uh, right. Uh, Flash is there. Boom is here. And We're, wind is uh, sitting in for Flash today. Yeah, it's <laughs> hot wind. Uh, where is Flash? It's drunk. Guy, He's I in West call. Point. <laughs> He's in West Point at a rotary meeting. Yeah, that's what he tells people. I know. Julian, yeah, I West got a call Point. about three o'clock this morning from the, you know. From the bar. From the pokey? Yeah, Tony's not going to make it. He's, uh, he, you know, he's dragging himself out right right now. He's probably going to sleep on the bathroom floor, so don't expect him at 7. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Kidding! Good guy, Greco. Good morning. Oh, uh, that's good. Good morning. Good, morning. good morning, Plastic Jesus. Thank you for joining us this morning. Point him right at the camera so everybody can see him. There we thumbs go. Thumbs up. Thumbs big... up and the big point. We That's our mascot <laughs> sent in by a listener, which we appreciate. Because often Tony and I start the show with the old I'm Esteem song. I don't care if rains or freezes, as long as got my plastic Jesus riding on the I dashboard of my car. Uh huh. I know it. I know it from uh, the Paul Newman movie. What was that movie? Uh, the one where they play pool? No, no. Uh, cool Hand Luke. Oh. That song was in Cool Hand Luke. I think that's where I think. I'd that's like where a, I'd like a listener. I'd like a, uh, I'd like to fact check you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, <laughs> Mr. Do. Vice President. I'd Please like do. to fact check. I'm you. glad you fact, fact check my first thing because two or three later it'd it's be done. Little, it's be forgotten. sketchy. Yeah. But well, yeah. we appreciate that. Uh, I am a proud Christian and glad to have that here. I hope that the St. Augustine Cartel is listening. Uh, those are my church going friends. Uh, down well, some of them, not Bad Andy, but we have dragged Bad Andy to church a time or two, and uh, You're supposed to drag him. Um, I, speaking of dragging, I remember when one of these would be on the dashboard of every car when I sure, was sure with the well, not not she's mostly Mary and uh, Saint Christopher. Yep, that's uh, uh, that's I think that? probably Why the people theme stop doing that because think? America has uh, oh listen, can I generated into a non-Christian I wanna, country. I want to withdraw. Yeah, you want to withdraw that question can't. before I start <laughs> ranting? Yes. About taking God, maybe taking God maybe out of they everything. Flew in accidents maybe the that's why we're burning to the ground. Maybe that's why we have disease and petulance and poverty because we've taken the Lord and Jesus out of everything. Aren't you glad you tuned oh, in this morning yeah. to wake up to such is joyous it, sounds from the radio? Is it at least reasonable to consider that? While I, reali- I realize and recognize that there are many a chance factors. It was, it was a backlash to having to wear seat belts. Because I remember when everybody had a fit about that. Oh, yeah. We did. It was the it's end like of the, the mask. That was the it's mask exactly of the, the mask. Yeah. You're taking our rights away. Why I'm should we wear seat I'd rather belts. launch through the windshield in a, right. in a head-on collision. That's right. yep. uh, very good. Guy Greco, uh, 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 Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I got to look I because... There Every, are two of them. <laughs> I have it all over. Yeah, Mid Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union uh, representative and uh, co-host for uh, Thunder Thursdays. Uh, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, thanks for getting up so early. I, it was you nothing. Obviously, so, you didn't play last night. No, I did not. I haven't played. It's the most depressing thing. Yeah, I, know, I right? went to uh, the annual musicians tournament, which was cut down to three foursomes. Um, <laughs> wow! We went, How well, exciting! Was, <laughs> yeah, you're uh, guaranteed a top prize. <laughs> Yeah, we won. <laughs> a gold, we, gold, silver, or bronze. We won, and I'm terrible at that game. But it's well, that's ball. too bad. But there, uh, you know, here are people that play all over the world. Some of them, and and play with very famous people, and they got nothing. They got nothing. Musicians have nothing coming in. It's the last thing somebody wants is for you to attract the crowd, and I that's right? kind of by design. What musicians have been trained to do their whole life when they play. Out. And goodbye to Eddie Van Halen. He was an incredible. Yeah. It, it, for for my generation, I can't believe I'm he was sixty. Years. I can't believe he was sixty five years old. Really, you think he was younger or uh, older? Much, I thought he was much younger. Well, he was uh, he was the rock star uh, when I was a kid. Yeah. We, you know, Eddie, everyone had yeah Van in Halen. the eighties. Yeah, yeah, it was the eighties. I listened. I, I everybody listened from to Van Halen. Eighty two. Yeah. Uh, to to Van Halen playing everywhere. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot about him I didn't know through his obituary, right? I didn't know he was that sick either. So, yeah, he had throat cancer, right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know he was Dutch. (laughs) Uh, 
<laughs> I didn't know so he was Dutch go. either. And then he wrote all his songs in a cocaine and alcohol-filled uh, yeah. uh, haze. Yes, which probably he said did made not him have more creative. Jesus yeah. on any yeah, other day. His brother's still alive, right? Drummer. His brother was the drummer. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Alex. And uh, they had Sammy Hagar in the band. They, of course, uh, 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 name that comes right to Jamie, the top of your head. Uh, David Lee Roth. David Lee Roth. I was going to say Jamie Lee Roth, but it's Jamie's Crying by David Lee Roth. And you remember the urban legend. I don't know if anybody, everybody uh, my age. Curtis? No, everybody my age that grew up here, though, that maybe went to, to local high school. Why schools. do you have to exclude me? I'm sorry. I know you're from Glasgow, and that's <laughs> no, a different I'm area. I'm from I'm just not your age. <laughs> remember the, the urban legend that, that Jamie's Crying was written about a girl who lives in our community. Never heard of I that. remember her from college. Yeah. Said she was uh, um, his niece. And that was an accepted urban legend. May or may not be true. Don't know. I'm thinking there's a really, really good chance it's not true. There's a really good chance it's but, not. But, but it could be. I mean, it had to be it written about somewhere, great, right? I majored in cafeteria. at Back then it was just called UCK. Now it's SUNY Ulster. And uh, I tried for, for a semester or two there. Uh, I found my way to the cafeteria and never left. And that's where uh, all these legends were discussed regularly over the orange tray of... of uh, Adequate food. Um, Plastic Jesus is buff. He's he's all pumped Plastic up. Plastic Jesus goes to the gym. And yes. he's winking. Yeah, he works out. And, and his hair is... For no saviors, have you noticed, uh, Jesus has the best abs of any savior. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, odd observation, but well, but not untrue. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about religion uh, as, as a belief. You I'm also, just talking by the way, about... Iconic uh, religious, religious like, Buddha, like Buddha, Gandhi, Buddha, Buddha, Buddha for yeah. instance. No, I have a Buddha no belly. Abs, yeah, no abs compared to. You know what else Jesus had? What did he have? The best message. Ah, ah there you see, go. The you're, best you're, message. You're so good at this yeah. stuff. Well, uh, uh, my my eyes have been opened. Uh, 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 I was raised in a in a Christian Protestant family. I went to church, but my eyes were opened later in life by those people who I've chosen to spend time with as friends as to the message of, of Jesus and Christianity. And, and I actually uh, w would say that, that in, in many of the philosophical discussions we have, my stance is that, that God is the same God, the God, the God of, of the Israelites, the God of the Christians, the God of the Muslims. We all pray to a God. We may have a different name for, for him or her, uh, but, but the, the supreme being is the same who shines his light down upon us all. There's uh, any faith brings comfort of some kind. There you go. Good. And that's a precious little supply. And Plastic Jesus precious. has very big feet, and he's standing on what, a pillow? That's not I'm easy. I'm not sure it's a pillow. It's it a blue rock. No, it it's could a big be blue rock. Uh, I want to, Guy Greco, we had uh, from Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union, to give the plug, right? Please, uh, often a, as you can. A couple of uh, weeks ago, folks that listen regularly will remember we had Valerie Dwyer, uh, the CEO of Arold Construction. Yes. Uh, daughter of Gary and Lisa Arold, great friends of mine. And she was here representing a group called Concerned Kingston, an informal ad hoc group of residents uh, of the area, some mm -hmm. from the city proper. Uh, some from outside, but still. Uh, uh, and this is of all ages, because I. This uh, is they this me is to, uh, from to at least watch uh, everywhere, and we had a, a, a she organized and, and had a, a series of pop up letter signings to send a message to both the school district, and city hall, that this community is not anti law enforcement. This community is not anti school resource officer that those people who, and this is critical, pay taxes here, who live here, and who have lived here for a long time, support both our law enforcement community and their mission, uh, and, and as a part of that mission, the SROs, or school resource officers, who are police officers assigned to our local schools to mm -hmm. keep our children safe and, and uh, facilitate the educational process. And she was able, with no advertising other than a Facebook post, produce 959 signed letters to present to the school board. And I don't know how many thousands of letters to present to the, yet, it'll be revealed soon, 
to present to the mayor next week now, does in support of these programs. Now, the, uh, are these the decision makers on the SRO? The school board is the decision maker on the SRO. Uh, so uh, they create a contract between the, the school board and various police agencies, the Sheriff's Office, uh, Ulster Police Department, Kingston Police Department, perhaps New Paltz, perhaps Ellenville, uh, because they, they bring in a local officer or, or sheriff or deputy or trooper. And now are these uh, people that are still on duty? Can it be someone that's retired? No, nope, these, these men and women are active on-duty police officers whose daily duty assignment is to go to that school and be there uh, for, for the school day and school events. And they coordinate with the administration, patrol the hallways, do peer mediation, break up fights, do counseling, informal counseling with kids who are in trouble, and create a face for young people to identify with police officers that isn't the negative face portrayed in the helpful. national media. All right? Where police officers are portrayed in the national media in a negative light all the time. And I see now you're going to disagree. Well, but I'm going to disagree because it's okay. anytime, and this isn't even a disagreement with you as a person. Thank you. Or as my pal. <laughs> it's a disagreement. Nice. It's a disagreement with infinitives. I don't like always and fair point. Ever, and I most just, of the time. I'm sorry. I'll correct myself, okay. guy, because right. you're right. You're absolutely right. There are feel good stories often there are. Uh, uh, about. But I, times, I, but I get your point. I'm not yeah. saying that I don't get your. point. We turn the TV on. We see this cop did something terrible. By the way, he or she probably did do that terrible thing. Right. But that is not and, representative and of law enforcement. Right. It's representative uh, of. A, a that person. Small, of that person. That's yeah. there you go. Of that person. There you go. And uh, and another interesting note along those lines, uh, as as again as regular listeners are aware, I uh, submitted an application to be a, a police commissioner. I'm a retired city of Kingston police officer. I had 25 years uh, of uh, police work in New York State. Uh, I worked for the sheriff's office, the village of Saugerties, and the city of Kingston. And, and you made a mean pizza, I heard. And I made a mean pizza at Mr. Broadway that, thank you very much, well, taught by none other than uh, uh, Johnny, uh, to, to throw, Johnny Mizuka to throw that pie. But, uh, you know, I, I have experience training, and uh, you take it get a picture? Yeah. <laughs> with him. With, with Jesus? Might be my only Is it shot. your first picture Might with Jesus? Yeah, shot. okay. That's Unless that's you go and have a shirt that says <laughs> I'm with stupid. I don't think I'm going. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, interestingly, the Common Council of the City of Kingston passed a law banning police officers, current or former, and any member of their family from serving on the Board of Police Commission. I remember you discussing this before with me, discussing it. And uh, uh, has that changed? Has there... It has not changed. Oh, it's the same. They it's still the don't want they, they... I thought I had read that they were consider or thinking about reconsidering that. I, I'm, maybe fact. they have. I'm unaware of that. If well, I if they do, I think that would be prudent. I and, I could be making it up. I'm now, at the age here where I told you this morning. I got to the front <laughs> door and realized as I was locking the door and leaving, I had the remote control in my hand. That's so, right. Sometimes yeah. I find mine in the fridge. Like I said yeah. to you, you know, I go to get a snack. I put the remote in the fridge. I close the door. I go back. I try to change the channel of TV and immediately blame the dog for stealing yeah, it's the hard remote. To change yeah. the channel with a ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> it doesn't click. It doesn't make any sound. So, so uh, uh, now a member, of, a, a recent member, a, a, a woman who served on the board for a year, a reverend from a, a church in Midtown, her name escapes me at this moment, but I'll look it up, um, has resigned from the Board of Police Commissioners, creating yet another opening. Um, and the city, of course, has said they'll consider all past applications, except those put in by the numerous uh, former police officers. Uh, and by the way, it doesn't have to be a police officer, police officer, probation officer, District attorney, uh, I, I'm, uh, because it, it specifies law enforcement. People previously employed in law enforcement and or their families are, are banned from serving on the Board of Police Commissioners. I think, that's a, uh, uh, I think that's discrimination of a class of people, perhaps begging for a class and action do you, lawsuit. Do you know the, the argument on the other side, what the rationale for that is? Um, I, I, no. I do not know. Uh, other than, than they don't want the opinion of the people uh, who have the most knowledge about how police departments that doesn't seem should to make, operate. I don't. But that you know. doesn't seem to make sense. There had to be some. 
it, misguided or not, there had to be some rationale for them to do that. I'll, 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 reference, I'll reference a man who was a mentor to me at the police, at Kingston Police Department, right. and also a friend, uh, that, that the friendship that developed over the years, both yeah. with him and his family, was uh, uh, Detective Junius Harris. Yeah. You, did you know Junie? Sure. Yeah. Who didn't, right? Iconic. Who didn't right, know yeah. Junie? An icon. Yeah. Lived in Midtown Kingston, raised his family there, his beautiful family, by the way. Yeah. Uh, great kids, great wife, great kids, was an icon at the police department, well, absolutely. Uh, a, a phenomenal police detective, ran security at the Kingston High School for decades, and upon retirement went to work for the DA's office as an investigator. Right. When he retired from that, he became a police commissioner and was phenomenally successful. Why? Why? Because he knew how the police department should operate. Right. And if he saw something being done wrong, he called it. So uh, and now he couldn't be a commissioner. Just, just, to, just to do the other side. So that makes me think even more. Well, there, had to, there has to be some explanation as to why they would not want anybody. Even if it's not an explanation you agree with, there's got to be some explanation. They wouldn't just right? well, the, the arbitrarily folks, say that we don't. Because it makes sense that someone with that experience would be on that board. You would, unless well, I'm missing something. You know, who's on the board that, that oversees doctors? Other doctors. Who's on the board that oversees lawyers? Other lawyers. It's, look how well all that's working <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, you know, I hear from our listeners uh, now and again while we're on the air. You do? Yeah, I do, often. And uh, uh, That's, a, that's this, one now? That's one right now. Nice. Uh, I'm not going to read it verbatim, but, but it starts with, let, let's cut to the chase. Some local organizations, uh, Rise Up Kingston, which is a division of BLM, uh, are, are anti, you may, are anti-police. They want to defund the police, which is absurd. Uh, and they have sway over our political leaders at the moment, apparently, because they're the ones that, that have, uh, did not want uh, police officers involved in police work. And so until our politicians recognize, like is happening with Valerie Dwyer's uh, organization that most of their taxpayers and citizens are pro law enforcement, pro police, uh, pro peace and democracy, and law and order. Let's say law and order rather than pro police, because maybe that's inaccurate. They wish to live in a society where laws and order rule the day, where everyone must follow the same set of rules, and if you violate those rules, everyone is subject to them. Do we apply it fairly? Sometimes we don't. That is what we should strive to improve. Absolutely. Right? I think we can all Absolutely. agree that whatever you do, you could do better. And we could do it yes. better, but we need to have it in place. Well, I don't think anyone could argue with that. It's a, well, no one in this room could, but uh, well, there's been an argument about it. It's early in the morning for me to argue about anything, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> Except, except maybe donuts. I well, we had another that. shooting in Kingston last night. So there's, uh, or yesterday, I'm sorry, not last night, not at three o'clock in the morning, at three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, bullets donuts flying. Donuts reminded you of this? Yeah, well, you know, I was shot. a cop, right? Oh, we have a caller. Oh, Excellent. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air with Guy Greco. Oh. With, with, with the great Guy Greco? The, uh, really Guy Guy. You're mostly on the air with Scott, <laughs> who's bulldozing me. Thank you for oh, calling yeah. for rescue. Thank you so much. And hi, good morning, Scott. How are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you. How are you? Doing okay. I was just listening to your conversation, felt I get my two cents in. Please. You know what the problem is? When it comes to law enforcement, the people who know, as in the cops, often get the big no every time they want anything. It's like, you know, they get treated like the enemy. I'll tell you a funny story. I used to work in institutional settings as a correction officer, and I applied to take the job as a parole officer. Now, I work with offenders in institutional settings, and the criteria is that combined education experience. My experience as a correctional officer did not count in the eyes of the civil service. <laughs> but if I had been a Boy Scout master, worked with the Salvation Army, worked in a food kitchen, any one of those, that would have counted. Unbelievable. Now, figure that one out. You can't figure it out because it's ridiculous. Uh, common sense does not rule the day, sadly. Perhaps it will again. We should strive for that. Um, it's unfortunately until they stop treating police officers 
and sheriff's deputies and troopers and anybody in the spectrum of law enforcement. And corrections like officers and probation and officers and parole officers all are lumped together. But, you know, you made an interesting uh, point. Uh, society says no to, to uh, currently to anything that, that police officer, law enforcement community wants until there's a tragedy. Remember when domestic violence became the hot button issue and the laws in New York State were changed and police were blamed for not uh, adequately responding to domestic violence. So we fixed that problem and we responded to domestic violence in a different and better way. Remember when, right. when you didn't worry about going to school and getting shot until people brought guns to school and then society demanded that the police do something about a problem society created and we responded. Exactly. And yeah, now they want to take you're absolutely somebody. perfect. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, oh. I, 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 guy yeah. says I'm bulldozing, so I'm being quiet for a minute. But I, neither yeah, I noticed. Said I noticed so that incredible, that something. incredible silence. I could yeah, fall well, into it. Uh, I could go on and on. Society creates well, yeah, problems. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, what I was going to say is that what people don't realize is that. Well, first of all, you haven't been on the job. You know domestic violence makes your blood run more cold than a normal robbery. Absolutely. You don't know what's waiting for you at the other end. <laughs> and uh, but the thing, but the thing is that a police officer gets the call. You know, you know, I, 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 you got you got the seven seven rule when it comes to an incident where 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 force is required. You got seven seconds and you got twenty one yards, seven and seven, yep. to, to make to make the right decision of whether you get to go home that night or you get a toe tag. Let me tell you about and, uh, domestic, yeah. domestic violence and how it affects police officers. Um, I, I won't know. It was my first year. I'll say it was my first year at KPD. It was my th fourth year as a police officer, my, my first year at KPD. I responded to a call uh, in the Midtown area of Kingston um, for a check the welfare disturbance and found a crack-addicted um, woman passed out yeah. with a disabled child uh, infant, a disabled infant who was in uh, casts from it was a, a, a oh, boy geez. from his hips to his ankles uh, that had not been attended to in days, days. He was dragging himself along the floor. She was passed out. Uh, the the residence was to be polite a pigsty, and yep. m it was my responsibility at that point as a young police officer to take whatever action was appropriate. I was broken hearted guy. I remember to this day what that child looked like. I did w the best I could do. I, I, I called the appropriate uh, authorities, stayed there, tried to help the child. And who, I'm Rem sorry, who was it that you would call in that situation? At that time, Child Protective Service. It still is. Child Protective right. Services. Well, you first call supervisor. You and call they, Child Protective Services. And they take services. action immediately? They respond. Well, that's what you hope, right? Yeah. Often they do, a, an incredibly di they do an incredibly difficult job very well. But, but the, the, uh, the point is, these things affect police officers more than they affect anyone else. When you see, uh, to, to the caller's point, to Ed's point, when you see these things, it affects the rest of your... I'll never sure. forget that day. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, we're just human beings, too, by the I, way. Uh, yeah, but I would imagine after a while, you see so much, you get a little... So it jades you, right? Yeah, I, I would have you, to. You can't help it. You can't, go, you can't go home in an emotional state like that every day. You try to rise above it. It affects your life. It affects your relationship with your... And when you hear these people from Rise Up Kingston, one said to me the other day in person at one of the pop-ups for Concerned Kingston, well, one of the biggest problems is domestic violence by police officers against their wives. And, and I want to you know, where I do only, you I know, I think I know exactly who said that where to you. Where do you get that from? That is, that is, by... Uh, I'll admit that probably... Do they break down domestic violence by job by, description? By job description? Do they really do There's that? There's probably the same percentage of domestic violence, maybe maybe a little more in the ranks of people involved in law enforcement than people involved in society, but uh, uh, it's not it's not a, the major problem. Uh, it just, it's just the absurdity of, of this movement to uh, vilify the police. It breaks my heart. You know, the, Go ahead. Go ahead. It would be nice if, nice if they spent... Five days riding around in a car with an officer. They might get an idea, a different idea. Listen, there's a lot of it's good jobs out there. Every, everybody's great. Mechanics are good at what they do. Doctors are good at what they do. There's stress in all jobs. Just imagine having to strap on a vest, put on a piece, tap on your laser, put on your nightstick. You know, dress up, 
knowing that the, before the end of the day is you're going to experience violence. And depravity. You, know, that, you that, experience that. the depravity that only a human being can do to another human being or an animal. Uh, we we are, are, are in desperate need of better examples of how to live. And uh, police officers provide that for many, many uh, people. Uh, we're not perfect. That we are not perfect. We can improve. Um, we will. But but to vilify police is a sin. Yeah, when you dial nine, when you dial nine one one, with, with apologies to them, you don't don't expect the rotary. Expect <laughs> guys and gals oh, with guns to. Oh, Tony, 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 Tony! I can't I can believe I gave sorry, Tony, Tony such I'm sorry, a cheap, Tony. cheap shot at. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ju I'm just saying, you know, that you know, when you call 911, expect an armed professional to come save you. When you call 911, something crappy has happened to you. I would like to use a more definitive word, but I won't. Uh, and you need help. And you don't call the, the uh, right, you don't call your priest. You don't, you don't, don't call, call the rotary. Don't I call the rotary. Who don't do you call? call? Tony Marmo. You call the folks that have uh, uh, some training and experience in how to deal with crappy things. Well, thank you, uh, Ed, for calling. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. Uh, thank you for your support. I think this is Ed. Am I right? Yes, it is. All right, good. A little, I, I recognize a little late voice. in the conversation to make that determination. Uh, well, I do want to make sure. You know, I recognize his voice, a friend. Yeah. Um, and th thanks for listening. Uh, I got another comment from another uh, listener. Good morning, Nick. I'm glad to hear from you. Thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, and, Ed, thanks for your support and, and your constant commitment to the community. Thanks for calling, Ed. Thanks for calling. Have a good day. Uh, we're going to take a short break and be back sh uh, with – uh, who's our first guest? I think it's Bill Corby's. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, I I don't have the guest line, line up in front of me. I, I know Brad Jordan's coming on today. I thought maybe it was the amenable Armenian. Oh, and but I'm he... not sure. John, the surgeon from Central Hospital. Well, listen, we'll find out in a few minutes. <laughs> Come on right back and keep listening. And Listening to Kingston Community Radio on WGHQ Kingston on your radio at 9:20 a.m. and 92.5 FM, and also online at mykcr.org. A hundred years ago, there were a hundred thousand tigers in the wild. Today, there are as few as 3,200. The Earth's wild animals can't speak up when they need help, but we can. Be the voice for those who have no voice. Visit worldwildlife.org. Central Hudson reminds you that summer thunderstorms can strike with strong, gusty winds, knocking down trees and power lines. If you see a downed power line, call 911 immediately to report it. Power lines can carry an electric current strong enough to cause injury or death. Stay at least 30 feet away from a fallen line. Don't try to move it or anything that has come in contact with it. And never drive over a power line. Remember, your safety matters. Hi, I'm Steve Thomas for Habitat for Humanity Restore. Habitat Restores are nonprofit home improvement stores and donation centers that sell new and gently used furniture, building materials, and appliances to the public at a fraction of the retail cost. The Ulster County Restore at 406 Route 28 in Kingston needs your donations. Call our hotline at 845-853-7499 to schedule your free pickup. And thanks. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter. Yet you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Ruth Quick um, from the town of Ulster. I support Kingston Community Radio, and you should too. This portion of Kingston Community Radio is brought to you by Ulster Savings Bank. Visit the newest branch conveniently located at the Ulster Commons Plaza in Lake Katrine. Experience the difference that local community banking offers with the convenience of another great location, easy access, plenty of parking, and a 24-hour ATM. 
Ulster Savings Bank, invested in community, invested in you. Member FDIC. Continue our Ooh. flash. Boom. Uh, yeah, there you go. The wind. Lawrence was at, see, he was animated. That was quick. He looked Lawrence like a shortstop animated. pegging at the first base. He gives us the finger when it's time. Lawrence always gives us the finger when it's time to go on the air or off the air. I'm not dangerous, Dan. So You're I'm not, not dangerous, Dan. I, the I melodious tones Dan. of dangerous <laughs> Dan. We do miss him. We do miss him. Is I that mean, what it, I mean, Dan could put a crackhead to sleep with that... Uh, with that uh, mo- monologue. Uh, is is that his demographic, actually? No, yeah. it's not his demographic. Oh. And Dan's a wonderful guy. He's a, a great friend and a wonderful guy. And uh, I think the amenable Armenian might be on the phone. I'm a surgeon, maybe. Is he? Oh, phone. well, listen, I, I'm, I'm just sorry that he's not, as they say, in studio. Yes. Because I hate call- the and call in. We actually haven't seen so him well. in 3D in, what, like six, seven I months now, right? I haven't seen him since last year. I think. No, no, no. We, oh, sorry. maybe you, because you were in Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to introduce to you in this corner, weighing in at 165 pounds, five foot seven, With a reach of 88 New York, inches. Reach of 89 inches. The amenable Armenian world record holder, John Masurgian from Central Hudson. Good morning, John. <laughs> Good morning. How are you doing, Scott? Do you Good miss morning, me, buddy? John. What an intro. I know, right? I wish that was 155 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I was being kind. I didn't want to guess high. <laughs> hmm. right. Oh, how are you guys doing this morning? Never felt better or had less, John. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah. I guess, nice, John. Breezy, breezy day. The question is, how are you doing since you're uh, representing your company, Central Hudson, uh, one of our underwriters that we appreciate immensely, uh, a community activist, uh, a provider of electricity and, and in our community, and also uh, active, when I say community activist, they are huge supporters of businesses and people in our community, things they don't have to do. Right, John? Oh, thank you for saying so. <laughs> it's, it's our pleasure. You know, you know, most of us are from the Mid-Hudson Valley. We were born and raised here, so this is our home, and, um, you know, if we're in a position to support our communities, we absolutely will. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's all part of, you know, working together. That's, that's, that's how we get through, that's how we get through everything. So an interesting thing that some folks may not know, uh, uh we had, uh, Mary Rose Wahalik from Ulster, uh, from Ulster Savings Bank on last week, um, talking about the Central Hudson program that you all came up with, uh, for this, uh, hideous, uh, COVID crisis mm. to try to be of assistance to local businesses. Can you talk about that for a minute, John? Oh, sure, absolutely. It, it's it's called our Back to Business program. It's focused on small businesses. Um, you know, we we feel that you know the small businesses are, you know, the the heart hearts of our community and probably have the least resources available to them. Yeah. Um, so we have um, put together uh, a fund of about a million dollars through our economic development programs to help um, reduce the cost of working capital loans that small businesses may take out from locally headquartered banks here in, in the Manhattan Valley. Let me put that in English so the, for, uh, for some of our listeners. If you have a small business and you're struggling because you can't make your payments, which all of them are, Central Hudson has created a loan fund for you uh, with with very limited criteria to to qualify, and you uh, help with the payback. Correct, John? Correct. It, it's for businesses with 25 um, employees or less. Um, if uh, they take out a working capital loan from one of the one of the participating locally headquartered banks, um, we'll put up to ten thousand dollars towards that loan, towards repayment of that loan, and you know that that may. That may buy you a year of payments, in other words. Yeah. That, that helps yes, that, you. That, that will reduce, reduce the, the number of payments they have to make right. or, or, and, and, the, and the total cost of the loan to, to, the, to that business. It, it, it in effect, uh, subsidizes the loan by up to $10,000. John, do you know how many people, how many local businesses, and I, I think very significant in that the state majority of under 25 employees? 25 vast. and under employees, which is the, as Guy says, is the vast majority of small business. And, and right. often those most overlooked, right, but sure. because, 
you know, there's plenty of money for, for, for big corporations, as we've seen the, in, in the news. But, there's, right. but small guys, mom, mom and pops like me, my, my business for years, a mom and pop, a family-owned business. Usually a lot of your customers at the Mid-Hudson Mid Valley, Valley Federal. Federal. Yeah, usually a credit union like MHV or a small savings bank. A local, that, that's where they do their business. Right, they're that's not, where they do their business. They're not necessarily the target for Bank of America or these very big. No, in fact, know, I, not I'm not aware of any program Bank of America has brought to uh, the Hudson Valley. But but maybe they have. I, uh, I'm not running the bad mouth on them. I'm a client of theirs. Right. But, uh, and I'm just using them. I'm not, yeah. I shouldn't have singled them out, but that's my example for we, big banks. We use uh, Ron Dout Savings Bank and, and uh, Ulster Savings Bank for the vast majority of our banking needs at my, uh, the company I used to own that now my, my family owns. My kids, the next generation, took it over. But John, do you know how many uh, how many local uh, small businesses have taken advantage of that as so far? Uh, about, I think it's about nearly eighty so far. Um, we've we've uh, provided about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in in loan funding or and in, in, in grants uh, to date, and uh, we're we're going to be promoting the program, you know, more widely. Um, you know, we have quite a bit uh, more funding available for... Yep. Math is not my our, forte, but I read that as you still have $550,000 yeah. to uh, put towards that, right? Yes, yes. How can somebody... So so let's say uh, my, my daughter and Allison, her, her business partner who owns Savon, let's say they're listening today. This is a company of less than 25 people, locally owned, uh, women, a woman-owned business, local women-owned business, and they're listening this morning and they say, gosh, we could use... Uh, some help with that because COVID has just decimated us. How do they, how do they get involved in this program, John? Well, they they go right to the the local bank. Uh, for so, uh, it, it we we do have information on our website at centralhudson.com. dot com. You just you can you can uh, just in under search, type in back to business. But um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine banks that are, are participating in in, in uh, the Kingston area. It's it's Rhinebeck Bank, Ulster Savings, um, Sawyer Savings, Rondout Savings, uh, and uh, in, you know indicate that uh, you want to take out a working capital loan and you're a small business and you'd like to also take advantage of uh, Central Hudson's Back to Business program. The bank handles all of the paperwork. We're, we're, we're supplying the funding directly to the bank so that the bank can reduce the cost of the, of the loan to the, to the borrower. That's fantastic. That's helpful. Uh, it, it's innovative. It demonstrates Central Hudson's willingness and commitment to be supportive of their, of their customers. I mean, let's face it. It's not like you have a choice. If you want electricity in your house, you either have to have, make your own or you have to buy it from Central Hudson. Right. Uh, but, and so, uh, in essence, they could not participate and still be wildly successful. They could not participate in the community and still make plenty of money. Sure. But there's not another company that we can go to. That's right. And yet, they still come up with programs like this, employ a guy. By the way, John Masurgian is a great guy. I don't know if you've ever met him. I have. I yeah, met him here okay, at the radio good. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's uh, a great guy for a lot of reasons. One of them is they employ my daughter there at Central Hudson, Jamie Burke. Even better. So they contribute to my yeah. family and my granddaughter. Appreciate it much, John. I have another a number of family members as well that work for Central sure. Hudson. Yeah. And I believe, as we've discussed before, my buddy Benny's son and my one of my son's best friends, Vincent. I won't use last names because I don't know if that's appropriate. But right. graduated with Vincent, played football with Vincent. Vincent's now uh, employed by Central Hudson. And that's a job, by the way, that brought him back to the Hudson Valley. Uh, oh, wow. Where he that's spends his money in local businesses, pays his taxes, Correct. kids go to the schools. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, thanks to uh, inept inept leadership and government here, we've chased away most of the businesses that have tried to come here and establish uh, uh, employment in, in, in our area. Uh, we haven't yet been successful in chasing Central Hudson away. So, and <laughs> so thank God they're here and they can provide not just a job, a really good job. Yes. Right, John? I mean, it's a well, a good paying job. No, it, it, it's a career for sure. Um, it is. I, I, I've been so fortunate to have been working here for, you know, some 26 years now. I, I, it, it, well, you I'm, must have started I'm when you were eight. I'm deeply grateful. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and 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 I, I like I like the fact that um, you know the company just touches on all aspects of of the community. Um, it 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 makes the job so much more fulfilling. You know, um, what exactly you're, you're is your trying to make things better? What exactly is your title at Central Hudson? My my official title is Director of Media Relations, but um, like everyone else. The title doesn't necessarily indicate all that we do. <laughs> oh, uh, boy, we've done well, that, right? Well, John, as you probably yeah. didn't know, uh, Scott just really added to your job description. Now you have to save the Hudson Valley by bringing people back in <laughs> that have left one time over political problems. Uh, uh, yeah. s- speaking of, of, of things going on in the Hudson Valley, a little, I think in Britain they say primer. I think we say primer uh-huh. uh, for later on in the show, and this is really important because I really Almost want people bilingual, to... bilingual, that way. I'm, yeah, I am bilingual. I speak both British and English. English. That's, yeah. that's impressive. Uh, uh, I have a degree in that. Uh, 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 Brad Jordan will be on a little bit later this morning talking about the Kingstonian Project, and that's, that's something that's super important uh, for everybody, no matter what your position is on it. Um, it's an important thing, and, and Brad's taking time out of his morning to come in and talk about it today, so nice. definitely stay tuned. John, on, on the point you just, or that guy just made, um, children grow up, we raise our families, right? You have a family here, guy has a family here, I have a family here. Or we raise our kids, we, we send them off for additional education, whether that's trade school or college or, or, or working in, the, in, in some capacity. And, and often we hear from them, oh yeah, I'm getting out of here. I, I'm getting out of here. I grew up, I'm getting out of here. There's nothing here for me. There's nothing, there's nothing no future. I think that's everywhere. Do you think it's everywhere? I, do. I, 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 I don't know. I have I have a nephew that lives in East Hampton, and he said he hates it. He can't wait to get out of really? it. Really, and and can't people are to get out people are dying to get there. Yeah. Well, what what I guess my point was that Central Hudson, uh, th- th- there's always government jobs, but guess what? We can't just have government jobs. When everybody works for the government, we're done. It, it's over. Well, they do that in China, don't yeah, they? Yes, they, they do the that. It's there. worked really well in China. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd uh, throw you a nice soft toss Thank you. There, thank Scott. you very much. Russia, everyone works for the government in Russia. Um, you need industry. You need private, uh, pri- private industry jobs. And Central Hudson is one of those. Now it's government regulated because it's a utility. But there are, you're a for-profit company, right, John? Yes, yes. Um, we are... Uh, Publicly traded. Uh, we are a high, highly regulated, publicly traded company, um, and we're hiring. Um, we wow. have uh, job openings uh, pretty consistently. Uh, you know, for two reasons. One, there's a lot more work that that needs to be done in, in terms of um, modernizing the energy system, but also there are a lot of retirements. You know, and, th- and this is true across the entire in- utility industry. Um, the the older workers are aging out, and um, there are opportunities for uh, new hires of all ages. And um, you know, we're really happy that we're we're able to offer these these opportunities, and and they're great jobs. And uh, I have to tell you that the the new faces we see at, at Central Hudson are terrific. You know, really hardworking, dedicated, smart folks, um, and. You know they're looking forward to a real fulfilling and and valuable career, and you know we could use some good workers. Tell you, um, is there a is there, there a there, pati- we have a, a caller? We have a caller that has a question for the, for John. I don't know how to do that. Oh, caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question for Central Hudson. When people are on oxygen and require the huge uh, concentrator in their home, do you offer discounts to these people? Um, we are not permitted to offer discounts on electric use. Uh, that There was a time when that was a possibility, but the state uh, said that they call that discriminatory pricing. But if, if someone is on oxygen or uh, electrically operated life support equipment, you should absolutely register that with Central Hudson because we take special, um, <coughs> you get special treatment, let's, let's put it that way. 
Um, if, if a storm is impending, we reach out to you. If you fall behind on your bills, we'll work with you more so than, than you know, than, than, than is the norm. Uh, we, 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 try, we try to take good care of anyone who is dependent on electrically operated life support equipment. You're not going to um, shut it off, you, are you, John? Yeah, there, there, there's, there's, a, there's a form that, that your doctor can fill out and, and send to us, and we'll note your account. And um, if, if there are ever any emergencies, uh, impending storms, outages, um, we'll check on you throughout the duration of the storm. We'll actually have someone come contact you and visit you if, if we can't reach you to make sure you're okay. And, again, if you're having problems with your bills, you know, all you have to do is speak to a customer service representative, and there are certain procedures in place <coughs> for those who are dependent on life support equipment. John, where could she find that form to have her doctor fill out? Where would that be located? How can she get one? I, I think I think the best thing to do is to call Central Hudson at 452-2700. That's 452-2700. Or just ask the doctor to do that for her. Ma'am, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you for welcome. listening, and thank you for taking the time to call in. We appreciate it. And God bless everybody. Uh, amen you, to that, ma'am. Amen to that. Um, John, you're not going to turn somebody off like that, right? You're not going to turn off someone who's dependent on electricity for right. life support. That, that, that's right, yeah. Okay, um, and, good. You know, we'll work with them to the best we can, uh, but obviously, you know, this is a person who, you know, has uh, life-saving equipment operating at the house. We, we do need the certification from, from the physician. Sure. Um, you know, and for those but, who are computer but, savvy, they can go to, to centralhudson.com and probably find that. But, uh, but often uh, people in those circumstances may be my age or even, even, even older even, guys' even age, my uh, age, older and may not be uh, computer savvy. So you can pick up your telephone and call what number, John? 452-2700. So having had experience with that, you get a recording. Who, who are they looking for at 452? And any of our customer service representatives can, can help them. So, so just if, push if they, zero. If they, if they get a recording, you can hit zero, right, right and, and you'll be connected to a, a person. You'll, you'll always, uh, unless the call volume is overwhelmed, <laughs> you'll, you'll always talk to a person. Um, but, but if there are more more callers than we have uh, operators, um, then, then the automated system comes on. But again, pressing zero will, um, will eventually connect you to a, a, a customer service representative. And we have a feature where we'll call you, we can call you back. You no one trusts that, just so you know. No, no, well, nobody works, trusts it that. It works like a charm. No, it doesn't work, and it no one trusts like it. It works like a charm. It works all the time, <laughs> every time. I never, no, ever, just, ever they're not hang up. Them. I you need to be patient. I'm not patient. <laughs> no I, the kidding. zero on what my phone, shock I know, right? Yeah. That yeah. You're not patient. The zero on my phone is worn out. Right. Because when I call and when, I get that stupid right. recording, when John I says just keep jamming zero, 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 zero. Repeatedly <laughs> like a pigeon with tap shoes. He means just once. <laughs> I can't stand automated answering systems. I miss the days when someone said, Good morning. You're, thank, you know, you're thank an, you an angry young Sabo. man. You can I'm, I'm an angry middle-aged <laughs> man. I'm an angry middle-aged man. Good morning. Thank you for calling yeah. Sabon. How can I help you? That's what I want to hear. Good morning. Thanks for calling Central Hudson. How can we help you? Good morning. Thanks for calling okay. Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union. Okay, How can so, we help you? So, you know, and John, I'm, I'm, not, I'm certainly not speaking for you, but when we've just had a major snowstorm and yeah, the electric out to 20 calls. million people they don't have 20,000 you can hit, yeah you can't possibly expect them to be there fair observation okay fair observation and central hudson does a, a, a wonderful job i've had to call them many 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 times how did i do john <laughs> you did great thank you <laughs> i um, noticed before you threw in Dr. Phil, which I thought was an odd thing for you to throw yeah. in. Yes. I throw in Dr. Phil. You said something. When John said you have to get something from your doctor, you said call up, get the form, and have Dr. Phil it out. Oh, but don't go. She's here all week, folks. Oh, okay. Don't oh, forget to tip your waitress. Yep, that was. That was your worst joke of the morning. So oh, it's, two it's early. Funny. It's yeah. early, yeah. Uh, John, I would be remiss before you leave us uh, if I didn't bring up my favorite Christmas shopping website, senhub.com. Dot com. Uh, 
<laughs> Last year's it's, Christmas it's, present it's, for the lovely no, Yvonne came from Senhub. We bought Nest thermostats. Oh, now, nice. Oddly, once you've been married, you know, the first year that I was married and I came home with a, uh, a wrapped, a new vacuum cleaner, some frying pans, <laughs> and an ice scraper, <laughs> Boy, I learned, you are I learned this, romantic. this morning, I learned about my mistakes. By 7.30 Christmas morning on that first year of marriage, I was fully briefed on how to shop for Christmas presents <laughs> and what not to do uh, in the I future. Bet. And I wasn't debriefed for some time yeah. after that. Yes. Uh, but uh, now that we've been married for 29 years. You know the secret is sent you know, Last year, I said to my wife, what do you want for Christmas? You know what she said? I want Nest thermostats. I said, really? Wow. No, really? I said, don't, don't, you know, don't set me up like this. <laughs> uh, right. She said, no, I want Nest thermostats. Where did I get them, John? Senhub. Senhub.com <laughs> or Senhub.org? At the Senhub store. <laughs> At the Senhub store. And by the way, I paid, I want to say probably half of what I would have paid at a uh, chain store ah. for them, at a, at a, at a chain uh, hardware store or, or online somewhere else at, at, you know, Amazon or something. I paid about half of what they would have cost. There you go. Wildly successful in our home. Because the biggest consideration in buying for the person that you love the most on earth is, is that you get a discount. Price, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right it is. Uh, uh, but that's not all we can get at SunHub, is it, John? No, no. You can get LED light bulbs. Um, at, during the holiday times, we do have uh, LED holiday lights. Uh, we have uh, uh, special power strips that will shut off and on automatically so that you reduce the use of what's called phantom energy. We have low-flow um those great low flow shower heads that are ever so Oh, everyone popular. loves them. Yeah. <laughs> Very popular. That's why I don't have hair um, anymore. But yeah, it, uh, there, are, there are all kinds of fun and interesting energy saving devices on, on, on the Sendhub yep. store. And, and you know, the, the reason for that is uh, we're working with New York to help customers reduce their energy use. And it's part of an overarching energy efficiency initiative um, to offer these. Uh, energy saving devices at a, at a discount. So it's it's a you know we're working with our vendors. We work with New York State to help bring the price down. So it's something that uh, we, we're happy to make available to our customers. You know, everybody listening who's yawning right now and says, "Geez, that sounds super boring." It's not. Well, go. Trust me. <laughs> just trust me on this one. If you have a computer, go to sendhub.com. It's like a cool online. You go, oh, holy shit, they got that? Oh, my God. I'm I want pretty sure they can't use oh, that word oh, on the oh, air. Sorry. Uh, I can't believe they have that. I can't believe they have that. Oh, here's what and I can't believe. I got excited, and I started I can't ordering believe, stuff. I can't believe without any basis, without any studies or reports proving it, that you're blaming John Masurgian for your hair loss. <laughs> I find that a little outrageous. The low flow. You know, I was never able to get it fully washed when I was young and had beautiful, I had beautiful, long, curly hair. Uh, you know, you could never. Well, get, that's allegedly. You know, I don't I see any beautiful, no long. Yeah. I could never get all of the, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, conditioner out. Therefore, I lost all my I hair. I see. I see. See, now when I was growing up, I wasn't one of those rich kids that had conditioner. Oh, you had to use the lard. <laughs> you used lard in your hair, right? I know. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, no, uh, comb my hair with a pork chop, lard. What are you talking uh, about? <laughs> so it's gross. So, uh, combing your hair with a pork chop? It's disgusting. Well, it's lard. It, it comes out to the same. I don't comb my. I hair thought with he was going to say combed his hair with a porcupine, <laughs> but which is which is painful which is but effective. Flintstone like. Uh, uh, we're we're coming to the end of the half hour. I know it's hard to believe, right, John? Uh, it just it seems like it's been a whole hour for you. Um, but uh, just a couple of quick notes on the, the community uh, involvement that Central Hudson has and uh, how much money you've, you've donated to local uh, charities. Just give us a quick blurb on that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's about $700,000 a year, um, about $7 million over the last uh, 10 years. It, it's a combination of funds from our employees and, and from Central Hudson, uh, too, uh, it, it's it's uh, a lot of little stuff, <laughs> so, so to speak. I mean, we're a big supporter of, of the United Way and of the, the Chambers of Commerce, but also um, the many, many not-for-profit organizations. And we have a program where we'll match our, our um, employees' 
contributions to not-for-profit agencies to help their, their dollars go further. So it's, it's, a, it's a great program. Yes, it is, and, and, and we're thankful uh, that Central Hudson chooses. By the way, they choose to engage in that. They don't have to engage in that. You're going to buy your electricity from them. If you want electricity, uh, you're going to buy it from Central Hudson. For those of you that heard the nice tune in the background of, uh, of John's uh, <laughs> guy is uh, – Guys trying to figure out, you know, ever see the Geico commercials the where, listener. where the it's old the people, sure it was. I didn't want yeah. to take, it's a listener <laughs> call me, they call you all the time. I didn't want to take it out of my pocket, it made it louder. I know what Oh, I see, yes, yeah. You know that Geico commercial where he's commercial. teaching teaching the old They're people how to spot. use their Geico cell phone? doesn't give us any money at all, there's no sense going through that. Right. John, John Masurgian, Central Hudson, Director of Media Relations, a great guy, a local resident, Poughkeepsie, right, John? Or John? Right. Yeah, I'm the Kipsy guy. Went yeah. to high school with uh, hey, one, Tony. One, one, one quick thing I wanted to mention. Um, we had some weather come through the area last night. We sure did, didn't we? <laughs> if anyone noticed. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, at, at, at peak, uh, we had about 20,000 outages reported, um, mostly in northern Ulster and Green counties, um, also some parts of northern Dutchess as well. So we are. Uh, we'll be working all day to uh, restore those those uh, those outages. Um, we got about about ha more than half restored overnight, um, but you know we have some crews coming in from um, the metropolitan area to help out. So we do anticipate on having power restored to the vast majority of affected customers um, by by the end of today. You heard it here Just first, folks. Note. Breaking news here at my KCR. Breaking news. Central Hudson is on the job. They're going to restore the power that was lost. That was a lot of wind last night. I was, well, I yes, was a was. little yeah. scared. I, was I actually scared. have to go up to the towers after work to check on them because it was shaking my windows in my apartment. I mean, it was really windy. Yeah. That's what was yeah. shaking the windows in your apartment? <laughs> yeah. One of them. Okay, good. Yeah, one of them. Uh, that's why Tony's not here today. He's, he was drunk. He couldn't get home because it was too windy. There was a tree down he, in the road by his, his hair. house. Tony's got beautiful hair like a he judge. Does. So he went outside and there was, was too much wind job. for his hair. And, uh, and <laughs> so he couldn't make it at home. John, when are you going to come back in the studio and bring us some of those delicious chocolate treats from <laughs> the right. see that I you brought? Know. You know, I, it's, it's I, been like I, two I or three. We were in the I old studio. Uh, we really miss you. We want you to come in. We appreciate Central Hudson as an underwriter. We appreciate Central Hudson as a community uh, supporter. We appreciate Central Hudson as a provider of uh, electrical needs. We thank the caller who called in with an excellent question about what, did, what happens if you rely on electricity to stay alive because of your medical condition. That was a great... Uh, it was. I'm, I'm constantly surprised at, at the depth of our, of our caller base and the questions that they have. And I thank you, ma'am, if you're still listening, for calling and paying attention to the station. And I would like to thank whoever just called me when John was speaking. Yes, yeah, so, so, so he could remember to turn his phone off. John, thanks. We'll see you in a few <laughs> weeks. Uh, you have to come in the station next time or I won't take your call. How's that? That sounds like a deal. Okay, buddy. Uh, care, we'll be John. back in a few minutes. Take us away, Lawrence. Listening to Kingston Community Radio on WGHQ Kingston on your radio at 9:20 a.m. and 92.5 FM, and also online at mykcr.org. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we're fighting against childhood cancer every day. At the heart of this battle are our donors. Most of us want to make some type of difference in the lives of others. St. Jude does miraculous work. The fact that no one has to pay, it's a place where everyone is treated as an equal. Everybody is welcome here, and it doesn't matter your religion or what part of the world you're from, all that is taken away. It just gives you some hope. It's just a nice feeling to put your energy into something that really does genuinely make a difference in a child's life. There's just no greater gift. If we have the ability to help, then we have a responsibility to help. Finding cures, saving children. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Find out how you can help at stjude.org. Central Hudson reminds you, when you're doing yard work, safety matters. If you use a ladder, be aware of overhead electric lines, including the service wire that runs to your house. 
Even wooden ladders can conduct electricity with dangerous results. And be very careful if there are electric lines above or near a swimming pool and you're working with skimmers, brooms, or other long-handled tools. Central Hudson wishes you a safe summer. Introducing the YMCA. Sure, you know the Y for a swim or a game of hoops, but we're more than that. We're a cause. When you take a jump shot at the Y, someone else is getting job training, practice yoga, as a team practices her leadership skills. We give people of all ages, incomes, and backgrounds a chance to learn, grow, and thrive. So while you might think of the Y as the place for lifting weights, we're also about lifting entire communities. That's the Y. We're so much more. Visit ymca.net slash more. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more, and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. Have you ever experienced a wish come true? For a child battling a critical illness, a wish come true can be a turning point. One song, one dance, one game, one adventure, one moment changes everything. Make-A-Wish needs your support to grant the wish of every eligible child. Visit wish.org now to help grant more life-changing wishes. Together, we can transform lives one wish at a time. Hi, this is Jim Quigley, Supervisor of the Town of Ulster, and I support Kingston Community Radio, and so should you. This programming is brought to you by the Friends of Kevin Cahill. As a strong advocate of local broadcasting, Assemblymember Cahill urges you to support Kingston Community Radio with your time and donations. Your contributions keep KCR vital and on the air at FM 92.5, AM 920, and on the web at mykcr.org. Please join Assemblymember Cahill and send your gifts of $10, $25, or more to Kingston Community Radio, Post Office Box 4364, Kingston, New York, 12402. Together, let's keep KCR alive. So it occurred to me while you were gone, Scott, and uh, welcome back, but it occurred to me that Plastic Jesus here, when he was a baby, he had three wise men visit him. Now he's got me, you, and Lawrence. Yeah, three it's, not it's, so wise men. I try to fair. polish him up after every show, you know, to make him look good. He looks great. He, and, he does. And, and he combs his hair with a pork chop. So. <laughs> it looks shiny. Yeah. The, the lard. The lard comes from the pork chop. You comb your hair with the porcupine. You grease it with the lard with the How pork chop. How much money are you saving in conditioner now? Quite, I bet. Well, clearly, size I only it. need it on my back now. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> There and it's so hard to read. You're scaring the listeners, the world dude. For that. I'm scaring the listeners. Uh, we're we're back uh, back to KCR, uh, Kings Community Radio, your your radio station, by the way. Uh, we're joined this morning uh, for the second, uh, uh, well, actually the third half hour, by uh, our great friend and underwriter, Bill Quirby's from the Ulster Federal Credit Union. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? We'd be better if you were here with us. Where are you? <laughs> well, I'm sitting at a desk uh, kind of trying to multitask. Ah. Oh, don't let us get in your way. <laughs> <laughs> are you at work already? What's that? Are you at work already? Oh, yeah. I get here be around 6.30. Wow. You're making yep. Guy feel bad now. He doesn't show up for work uh, until 10, 10.30. Uh, I can't you know, function at that. Good you know, for you, Bill. After he's had a couple of pops and a, and a bacon, egg, and cheese on a hard roll, right? I'm a morning person. I'm in bed by like 9 o'clock. So. so I was at my doctor yesterday. Funny you should say that. And uh, we were talking about, you know, some of those challenges that sneak up on you as you reach and surpass middle age uh, <laughs> relative, relative. What are you to talking about? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right. That's right. <laughs> relative to sleeping and going to the bathroom oh. and things like that. 
And he says, well, you know, you know, around stop, stop drinking liquids around nine or 10 o'clock, uh, bef- you know, an hour or two before you go to bed. I said, doc, I go to bed at eight 45. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> uh, Bill, what branch do you work out of? Uh, I'm right here on uh, Schwenk drive. We were just having the discussion, trying to identify, uh, all of the Ulster federal credit union branches. Can you name them for us? Not to put you on the spot. Oh, sure. Well, there's not many. Uh, we have another one over on uh, Ulster Avenue, right across from Christine's Restaurant. And we have one in Sargonies also at uh, Simmons Plaza. And then two days a week, uh, we're down in uh, Woodland Pond, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's where the connection with Tony came in. That was Tony Marmo's project, Woodland Pond. Oh, is that right? Back yeah. when he was CEO of the hospital. Yeah, he's the guy that came yeah. up with the idea, I think, of... I mean, you, I, I would say you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Tony's not here to do that. Uh, and, he's probably <laughs> and he hasn't, would if he were. probably right. hasn't woken up yet from last night's He binger. would correct you, even if you weren't wrong. But uh, if I recall correctly, Tony Marmo was responsible for building Woodland Pond, which is a beautiful facility down in the New Pulse area. Uh, it is, and it's fully occupied now, too, which right. is great. There was a number of years where he got some some negative pushback because it took a while to fill up. It's not an inexpensive place to live, but they work right. very well yeah. with folks that are getting to that point in their life. And so sure. I think it's neat, Bill, that the the credit you the Ulster Federal Credit Union provides uh, banking services for those folks on site, huh? We we do yes, and we also have a brand new ATM in there, so. Uh so they're very state of the art right now. Well, as a man who's in the ATM business, let me tell you: if you ever have need for uh, a privately owned ATM in any of your locations, I'm your guy to call. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I have your number. Thank, I thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Bill. You, you're a recently, relatively recently installed CEO at the credit union, correct? Uh, that's true. They waited till I was uh, 68, and then they gave me the position. That must have been a seasoning thing. I'm not sure. But, uh, well, congratulations. But I, I'm a very young 68. <laughs> I'm a very old 56. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's true. And, uh, you know, I was blessed with uh, zero interest rates and COVID uh, my first year. So. <laughs> Quite so, a welcoming committee yeah, for you. Congratulations. Bro. Now fix it. Uh, you took yeah, over. Right, for, right. You took over from Rick Manti. Is that correct? I did. I did. And Rick still. Uh, he's on one of our committees, so I do talk to him at least once a month. Rick and Peggy are lovely people. Uh, became friends with them years and years and years ago when one of their kids uh, was graduating and they needed a tent. And I had went up to their house and met them and and found them to be just wonderful people. Very very community involved. Very active. Both oh, yeah. of them. In uh, yep. uh, both in his position as uh, you C- CEO, is that how it works at the credit union? Yeah. Yes, it's uh, president and CEO. Pre- oh, oh yep. do, do you get double the pay for having double both titles? Pay. Oh, yeah, no, no, it doesn't work that way. But. <laughs> I keep asking Lawrence for a raise here, but uh, my paycheck's the same every week. Uh, well, titles are cheap, so they ought to make you like president or I'd like to be emperor chief or something, yep. you know. I like to be emperor of the world, and I have already my uh, my cabinet picked out for those that I'm going to need to help me run the world. Yes. Uh, it's between you and Guy for running the banking division. He's uh, he's already king of quite a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Bill, tell what do you want to tell us about the Ulster Federal Credit Union this morning? Oh, I, I think that uh, we're doing a great job, uh, dur- especially during these trying times. I know... Folks who were anxious prior to COVID are only 10 times more anxious now. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of us are, are still a little unsettled uh, as we go through this. But as you know, I mean, you go around town and uh, going into the post office, uh, you see that heroes work here. And I think anybody that's an essential business that has people uh, working and, uh, you know, meeting customers, and we call them members every day, face-to-face, uh, really through a plexiglass. But as long as you're going through the protocols and so forth, I think uh, any essential business where people are working are heroes. And um, i just like to shout that out to uh, for you, any Bill. essential businesses out there. I think you're 100% right. I couldn't agree more. Truth. During this yep, yep. nonsense, those people yeah, who... And it's, who and sorry, it's, we ahead, all though. know people that are a little anxious to begin with, so uh, this hasn't helped... Uh, you know, in, the, in that right. sense. 
And when we walked into to our local grocery store, those people, many of whom, by the way, make uh, at or near minimum wage, they still went to work. They did. Uh, they don't have a union fighting for them to stay home and get paid like other some other uh, professions do. Uh, they didn't have anybody representing them. They needed their paycheck because that's how they fed their families, and they showed right. up and they went to work. And they also didn't have toilet paper. They did not, but that wasn't their fault. <laughs> no, absolutely not their which fault. Is, which is kind of odd. Right? I, I thought so. Paper, I thought it, things like that. Who the number, knew, right? The number one item that people would panic shop for would be toilet paper. I took me by surprise. Well, can oh, you imagine sure. being out of it and needing it? What do you do? You know, the pork alternative. Chop. Yeah, pork chop. Use a pork. Not, by the way, a porcupine. <laughs> You'd be very sorry if when you reach for the toilet paper, instead you picked up a porcupine. It would, be it would not be a, a good oh, day for you. No. Uh, uh, Bill, you used to be the Teachers Federal Credit Union. Is that right? We did. Uh, that was many, many years ago. Uh, and credit unions are known for their segs, uh, their segmented bases. And we were the Teachers Credit Union, and we uh, got together with Ulster County workers, uh, Ulster County uh, Credit Union. And uh, so that's our; those are two bases, the teachers and the county workers. And that's still a very loyal group. Uh, you know, they still... They still use us um, very much. Uh, a lot of those members are still members from um, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, our, our member base is pretty old at this point. I know when I came to the credit union 15 years ago, the average age was 48. And um, I got to believe it's closer to 60 right now. Um, <laughs> what would you do before so, you came to the credit union? Oh, I've been in this field for uh, over 45 years. So, um Nothing, nothing really uh, surprises me anymore. It's kind of a fact of working with thousands of people and having four kids and seven grandkids. I, uh, wow. uh, I'm not easily um, panicked, <laughs> panicked or amazed by too much. So, well, I, I, I'm going to take a guess. That maybe this was your first pandemic, however, and uh, that's yeah, a, it wasn't. Oh. 1918 was a little early for me. <laughs> um, my, I, my just, I wasn't sure how old you were. My but. co-host <laughs> understanding was there'd be no math on this show today. <laughs> <laughs> well, interestingly, from some of our other institutions, we had we had Ulster Fed or um, Ulster Savings Bank last year, and Rondout as well, and Rondout as well. Both of them went through the 1918 right. pandemic as an institution. This is not their first pandemic. It's not their first pandemic. They had to <laughs> dust off the records and pull them out to see how they did it. Imagine being in the plexiglass business, man. If I had known then what yeah. I know now. Right. I'd be a trillionaire because I would have gone in the plexiglass business. Well, I think you have enough <laughs> money as it is. I don't think you need more of that. <laughs> uh, carry this for a minute for me. No, I have nothing to say. I can't. Carry. That's why I'm a co-host and not a host. <laughs> uh, well, you I carry. Aspi Bill, I, I, go, I aspire I go pick to. Up our next guest. I on. aspire to be a host someday. So, Bill, we're both in the same industry. Uh, did you? Uh, the adjustments for pandemic for you, was it uh, something that you had plans in the works? Did you have to, did everybody have to run around to get things going? Uh, oh, we really did. You know, we had to follow, of course, New York State guidelines, and uh, we're still doing that. Uh, people are checking in every day and uh, doing yeah. their, their tests and uh, checking off that uh, they could work that day. So we keep record of that. Um, you know, and we have all the precautions here in place with the six feet markers. Yeah, very glass, important. The, we're washing our hands all the time. And we got and plenty of solution out there for uh, workers. So, yeah, it's a, it's a it's definitely a process. And um, I don't know, you know, and with the mask also. So, I don't know when this is all going to end. But uh, I'm kind of hoping that it even helps uh, with our flu season coming up. That uh, you know, yeah. by people trying to be healthier. Yeah, it could work you know, that using way. Using the precautions, we won't we won't all get us sick. Um, yeah, during the winter months. Yeah, it could work. work that way. If everybody's all masked up, that may cut down on the flu. You don't hear much of that side of it. You hear the doom side of it. But I, I hope it works out that way. I really do. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we were probably as affected um, because of seventy percent of our assets are in investments. And uh, back in March, when Rates went to zero. Yeah, um, that had a 
it had quite an effect on our bottom line, as you can well imagine. Sure. So, um, so we're climbing out of that still, and um, you know, dealing with COVID and all the precautions and so forth. And so, yeah, it's been a year for us. And uh, I, I would tell you this one story that I think is funny, and my family keeps uh, giving me a hard time about it. Uh, my favorite number is two and twenty. And okay. I was born on February 20th. So as I was beginning the year in my new role, I was saying what a great year it was going to be. <laughs> and it's my lucky number and so forth. So uh, about about once a month or once a week even, uh, somebody in my family will go, oh, real good year for you, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> well, real good year. Unless, unless 2020. The only thing that could possibly help you out, Bill, and I wouldn't wish you on is that <laughs> By comparison, 2021 is worse, and let's hope that's let's not hope true. Let's hope that's not the case. <laughs> it, oh, doesn't, good. it doesn't sound like you're exactly Nostradamus with that prediction, though. Bill, I want to thank no. you for uh, being a supporter of the radio station. We truly appreciate it. Ulster Federal Credit Union, uh, we, we love having you uh, on. I just I want you to come in the studio next time. You're more fun in person. Um, our <laughs> our, uh, our folks know. from... Our folks from the Kingstonian are here, so we're going to take just a, 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 a two minutes to uh, thank Bill for taking the time to call in from his desk. I'm sure he's wearing pants, even though he's uh, on the radio. I don't know how that I'm comes sure up is. as a subject. And, 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 uh, and I'm not and, sure either. I'm at work, so and I'm also the human resources guy. So yeah, there you so go. So you always have to wear pants. Pants are not optional. To work. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bill. Have a great day, and visit Ulster Federal Credit Union online or in person and become a member. Well, thank you very much. Have a great day, buddy. Take care, Bill. You too. Take care. Bye. So our guests have arrived. Is that correct? I thought I uh, well, it was going to, yeah. I like the new digs. Yeah, aren't the new digs yeah, beautiful? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's like a pro shop now. Uh, and, and we are live, by the way, just so, so you know. Uh, Bill, is, uh, we've said thank you to Bill Corby's from the Ulster Federal Credit Union, one of our underwriters. We have all underwriters here today. And uh, we're welcoming in Brad Jordan and Joe Benura Jr., right? Yep. yep. Um, from the Kingstonian Project uh, to the studio. Thank you for coming in. We've had all call in today. I'm glad to have you here. It's a big day for you, I, uh, the front page of the Freeman this morning, huh? Uh, for the Economic Development uh, Committee, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, tell yeah. us a little bit about the Kingstonian Project and why, why, we're, why you guys are here, and thank you for coming in. Well, I think we're here because you and I had spoken. You said you'd love to get us back on. and, and I'd like you on every week, Brad. <laughs> uh, I'd like you on every week. But. Well, but to give an update of the status of where we are, where we are right there are now. a lot of challenges, and we want to talk about it. You're going to be here till 9 o'clock. So, folks, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. We might need more. Yeah. You might need more. Yeah. <laughs> we'll and, anything I say is not reflective of the two gentlemen in the room, just so you know. The and any conversation after 9 will continue at the diner. Yeah, yeah. there we yeah. go. Uh, um, Perfect. Yeah, no, so we um, – we're happy about the study that uh, are the, you? Oh yeah, absolutely. We got okay. nothing. That we Scott, the, it's you know, as far as we're concerned, uh, you know, look at everything. Look at the numbers. We're very convinced, and I think we've been able to convince uh, the elected officials that we've met with to date uh, the same thing. Uh, the council with the common council went eight point eight zero yeah. uh, in support. Um, the IDA board uh, passed it out of you know onto the resolution for the school board and the county legislature and the school and the city. Um, by a vote of 7 0. So we still have this conditional approval. We'll still have to go back to them. Um, we got out of committee uh, at the legislative level. We have another committee uh, in two weeks, but um, the study should be back by then. We hope we're not, it, we didn't commission it, the county did. Um, so, you know, it's another set of eyes on it to make sure that the pilot benefits that the community will get are greater than the, the taxes that we aren't going to pay on it because we are still paying taxes on it. Of yeah, I think that that's a really important point for yes. people to understand because. Everything that they read and hear is always jaded by whomever it is that's writing it or saying it. Yeah, right. uh, Our world. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine. <laughs> uh, by the way, I had told the city and the county to pound salt a long time ago and walked away, and you guys didn't. You know what, Scott? They've all been good. It's, it, it's, not, it, it's not fair for people to put it on the, the civic officials because, for the most part, we've had really productive meetings. And Joe it's was just good. been a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of yeah. The yeah. process has been the process. Time is money. The, the process yeah. has been arduous. That's for sure. But it's some of the project opponents that you know simply don't want the project, and so I think with people as time go, has gone on, they realize we keep solving different things that we've been asked to solve, and we've added so much to the project. 
but the opponents have never wavered. So, you know, initially they didn't like the way it looked, and then they didn't like, you know, the, the parking math, and then they did now it's the pilot, and it's going to be something else. It's going to be it's the road Because closure. they're opposed to it regardless of the right. facts. They'll 100%. never, ever, ever let the facts get in the way of their narrative. Yeah. Uh, th this is a project that is good, good for Uptown Kingston, good for right. Ulster County, good for Kingston as a city. Well, and the benefits and, that we put down, so the most important thing for, for the taxpayers to know, whether you're in the city of Kingston or the Kingston Consolidated School District, is this project, whether it's voted in or voted out, does not <clears throat> affect your taxes at all. Your taxes will your actually- taxes are not going up. Your taxes will go down a little down. In, initially. Really? Really. Initially, they'll go down a little because we're taking a 35% increase on the two properties that we own. Um, so we're going from $29,000 to $40,000. Uh, we're going to pay a 4% increase where the cap is at 2%, so you're going to go up quicker. Uh, we're going to share 5% if we're doing better. If those numbers are such that we are going to do better than the pro forma, we're going to share 5% with the city and school uh, of any additional income. Uh, so it's you know, Jim Noble, who's done it a lot of years, 20-some years is, uh, in the council, and the alderman at large said that it's one of the, he put it in the paper, is one of the best pilots that he's ever seen on behalf of the city. It's just so important that people who are listening Many of whom are, are my, my age or some even guys' age Could be or, or older. Possible. <laughs> I understand in, in plain language what you just said. I have it in front of me in black and white in, 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 a, in a press release. But your, your pilot, which stands for payment in lieu of taxes, which is a program that developers take advantage of to help them w because they're spending millions, in this case $60 million, to develop a project within the school district in the city, uh, a, a different method of paying taxes. It's not that you're not well, paying we're taxes. We're paying for the municipal garage. That's the most right. important thing. The only reason right. for this That's pilot, what this pilot is. That's what it means it's, is, yeah. is you're, you're structuring your payments in a different way to help you bring this development to the community. Absolutely. Is it, right? That's, That's correct. correct. Some pilots do actually raise taxes and some lower taxes. It all depends on what the underlying property was paying before and what it's paying after. So let's just say we bought a building that was paying $100,000 a year in taxes and we turned it into a nonprofit um, church. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to pay $0 in taxes. That may not even need a pilot because we're strictly nonprofit, but say we're putting affordable housing there and that affordable housing is due a pilot. That pilot may lower the taxes that were being paid before. Our pilot doesn't lower the taxes that were being paid before. We're paying 40% more than we were paying before. It's just structured differently. It's just structure, structured differently. Now, it's, is it less than what it would be if there was no parking garage? And we, if there was no parking garage, we'd pay 100% taxes. But we were asked to come up with a project that builds a parking garage for the city of Kingston and for the uptown businesses to use at no cost to the taxpayer. And this is how we're doing it. So during the time that we have to pay a million dollars a year, that's what this parking garage loses. The parking garage will lose a million dollars a year. So during that t period of time, instead of paying our $892,000 in taxes, we're paying for the parking garage. The minute the parking garage is paid for, our taxes by that point, this is year 25, are projected to be a million and a half dollars. And we could pay a million and a half dollars because we don't have to pay for the parking garage anymore. That's, That's the, gist the of it. part that no one seems to be able to get in the newspaper or on the, the, yeah. the, 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 some of the negative comments that you read online. Uh, Joe, I'm going to ask you to say that again yeah, because sure. I think it's very important that people understand exactly what the pilot is doing and what the project is doing in bringing a parking garage, not just for your complex, but for people who want to go and shop in Uptown Kingston, who want to who want to go to those businesses that are already there, right? Yeah. Uh, and want to also visit the new business you're building. You're building a parking garage along with a hotel, apartments. And commercial and 14, 14 affordable units. 14 affordable well. housing units as well. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing, you know, from, so the, from the private sector, 14 affordable units, public restrooms for the uptown community. Public, which, restrooms? public restrooms? Yeah, that's something uptown. that got added. Thank you. Yes. From a guy who uses the restroom a lot. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> well, so, and, and those are all the, you know, when Joe talks about the, the over a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, I'll go over all that. But you, that, that is inclusive of the mortgage payment that we had to make. Um, that's what people had to realize. We, we're building the garage. We're financing the garage. We're going to maintain and operate the garage. At all, no cost. At all that, to, yes, to the, to the taxpayer. Tax all that is factored in. And that's what the study is going to show. Is they're going to look at what is the public getting mm -hmm. 
-hmm. versus what are we not paying in the taxes? Because it, it is, it's the 890 that we're not going to pay. We are paying the 40,000 to start, but we're also paying with a million two. And, and sure, there's other things. So I'll, I'll back up, like you said, repeat it again it's because important. it's important. And, and our yeah. listeners, it's, it's, are very, our age, it's very important. Our taxpayers, our listeners are taxpayers, sure, and participants in this community. And and I can understand, you know, well, let's just be honest. Pilot agreements have had a negative connotation for a while. Most pilot payments. People don't understand. They don't understand how the pilot agreement works. They just think it's some tax break that this developer is getting. Some pilot agreements, just like some contract, it's a pilot agreement's a contract. So some contracts are good contracts. They're good for the taxpayer. Some contracts are bad contracts. This contract is set up to be very beneficial for the taxpayer and without it, there couldn't be a garage. So if you start with the premise, which the city of Kingston has been working on for three different administrations, that a parking garage is necessary mm -hmm. to help uptown Kingston realize its potential. Right now, I know I'm not, I don't live in Kingston, but I drive around the streets, especially once the business day gets going, trying to find parking. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And so that creates traffic and that creates an issue of- and I want frustration. And frustration, and you may get frustrated enough that you leave. You or- away, and you go to the mall. Or you fed that's the meter- right. That's exactly right. Or you fed the meter enough with enough quarters that you had in your car, um, and then the meter is going to expire and you leave and you're done shopping because- you, Or you come out to a ticket, which is always makes the day better. <laughs> that always <laughs> makes you want to come back, right? Yeah. So if you start with that premise, okay, now we need to get a garage built. How do we get a garage built? What does a parking garage actually cost? A parking garage costs, on average, uh, over $30,000 per parking space to build. Wow. Okay, so if that's you- That's a lot of quarters. That's a, that's a lot of quarters. <laughs> a parking garage, once you get north of White Plains, will always lose money because we're only able to charge in the Mid-Hudson Valley, whether it's Kingston, Poughkeepsie, Newburgh, Middletown, you pick the, the city in the Mid-Hudson Valley, you're only able to charge a max of $1.50 an hour. That's the going rate. Like that's People the high- They won't pay more. They won't they pay, won't more. pay more. Than Correct, that, right? and, the, and the monthly rate is $60 a month. But if you so take you work uptown, in other words, if you work and uptown, you want to buy a parking pass to correct. park in the garage, you can pay your sixty dollars and you can park every day. That's right, you can park every day. So if you do the math on what is a it's just a simple thing, pull out a mortgage calculator and put in thirty two thousand dollars, thirty five thousand, somewhere in that range, and just do the mortgage calculator. It's over two hundred dollars a month just to pay per space, per space, not per not for the garage. Correct, per space in the garage. Correct. Then you have to add in the maintenance cost and the operation cost mm -hmm. because that's just the financing cost. Now you have to maintain and operate. Take care of the garage. You got to take care of the garage. Maintain the garage, which yeah. is why the city didn't do it themselves. Right. right. So if you what if it was profitable, they would have built it. If <laughs> parking garages were profitable, there would be a parking garage in Uptown Kingston. Yeah. So fast forward, add it all up together. If you take the cost of building the garage, you add in the cost of operating the garage, and then you subtract the revenue from it, the garage loses over a million dollars a year. Just the garage. So now we've talked a lot of like government. <laughs> yeah. So that's just the garage. Then if you add in the other public benefits, which we're providing. So we're providing affordable housing. That was one of the things that came out of the project that was became very important to certain groups, including the city of Kingston. And there's no program to pay for that. Right. You're paying for it. We're paying yeah. for it. And so what does that cost? That cost another hundred thousand dollars a year in the difference between the rent that we would receive if those units were market rate or the rent that we're going to be receiving. Which going to accept because- Correct, because we have agreed, it. correct. So then what are the other public benefits that are easily tangible? Well, we're building this pedestrian plaza. It's essentially a city park. We have to build it, we have to maintain it, and we're providing public restrooms on it. Call that another $45,000 a year. And that's probably low. Yeah, I think that's a little low. It's a little low. Yeah. So, I, but I don't ever want anyone to. So we we we're conservative on the numbers. That's we're conservative, we so we have no problem with anyone questioning the numbers. Go ahead, look. Yeah. And when they see it, they're going to go, "How are they going to maintain that for forty five k a year?" Yeah. Okay. Um, you add all of those things together, and then you multiply them out over the twenty five year period, and then you take a look at what the pilot agreement is giving us in terms of a tax deferment or a tax. Uh, Restructure, well, restructuring, a tax restructuring. Because we're it, still paying it. We're just paying yeah. it for the garage. We're building infrastructure for the city of Kingston. Is what Correct. We're doing. If you take those two numbers, you, it's very clear that we are providing more benefit than the decrease in property taxes. And the decrease in property taxes doesn't mean anyone has to pay a dollar more. When a new project comes along, it just lowers the taxes for everyone else. It doesn't mean that other taxpayers have to make up the difference. There is no difference because if it could just in this case there is in no difference. In this case, because this Often is a good contract, there is when 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 just affordable housing is built or just uh, a, a, a drug treatment center or just some other uh, public project is built with a pilot, 
they're not paying taxes at the same level, and they're also not generating any new money. Therefore, your taxes go up because you're su supplementing this public project. In this particular project, the Kingstonian project, you're not supplementing it. You're allowing the developer to give a, a, a public benefit and let them restructure the way they pay for it until it's fully paid for, and then you'll begin to pay the full and month, and right? And we're not taking a property off the tax roll, which is important. We're actually adding uh, to the tax adding roll. To the, yeah. uh, and, and if you play the long game um, and look forward when the pilot ends, the numbers go through the rock. I mean, it's a, right through go the roof. Go through the roof. It's, it's, it's astronomical. I mean, we looked. If, it's like planting a tree. It takes a little, little while for the tree to grow and then bear fruit. Once it starts bearing fruit, it pays for itself over and over and over again. And that's what this project is. We're planting a tree here in Uptown Kingston. An apple. Let's call it an, an apple, apple tree. tree. Correct. I we like don't that. get any apples from the apple tree for a few years, do we? That's right. Well, it's, well you do get some. And here's the number. When you, a couple. you get a couple. a couple. But yeah. when it really takes off, oh my, in terms of tax payments, what do you get right away from this project? You know, if we go back to the apple tree analogy, you're getting jobs right away. You're getting consumers right away. And to the uptown businesses, those 300 people that are going to live in this building are probably more important than them, than their taxes going down by more. Mm -hmm. So in other words... And if, they're as important as the parking right now. And they're, they're as important as the parking. You know, linking 100%. that covered walkway, not covered, but the, the ADA compliant walkway to Kingston Plaza, which... You know, we have 1,600 parking spots down there, as you're familiar with. Yes, I am. <laughs> and and linking, linking those two, because the way I look at it, everybody that parks down in that plaza is a potential customer of every business in the plaza, and vice sure. versa, you know. so you, you Often you go to a plaza like, like yeah. uh, uh, Kingston Plaza because there are multiple businesses Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Because you can save yourself some time. I can go to Herzog's and pick up something that I need for the bathroom, and I can stop at Hannaford and grab something for dinner, and I can go over to, to JK's and <laughs> get a bottle of Captain Morgan. And uh, yeah. the florist for your wife. And the florist <laughs> for, thank right. you. Thank you, Guy. And the Probably don't do that <laughs> enough. <laughs> guy just earned points. You're right. <laughs> but, but, so just over the life of the existing pilot, the way the pilot is proposed right now, the increase in taxes there is any, that we will pay, the two parcels that are paying. The developer is going to pay an increase in the taxes from what it, you're paying today yeah. and which right. amounts to seven hundred thousand dollars over the 25 year life of the pilot right. if you go to year 30 just five years beyond that that number goes to 11.2 million is what this community will benefit in additional taxes paid if this project goes through so it's voting yes gives you another seven hundred thousand through the life of the pilot plus all the things joe just spoke about which is the affordable housing the public, the public bathrooms, bathrooms the parking park, the beautiful consumers park. and Jobs. so it's <clears throat> again seven hundred thousand in additional taxes paid also in addition to that then five just five years after that pilot expires we're at 11.2 million in additional taxes go to year 40 35 million almost 36 million and then go out 50 years to 66 million so if we're playing the long game as joe said for our children by the way what what is it what does brad jordan mean by saying playing the long game if you're if you're someone who lives in this community and you've had children you'd like the community to be here for them as well you'd like a reason for them to stay here you'd like somewhere for them to perhaps live Correct. you want them somewhere for them to shop that's what the long and game that, means. and that's the relief the long game for any community is that has a large percentage of their property such as the county seat and a city when it has a large percentage of its tax base off the tax rolls, either yeah, over for, half, over fifty percent. I, I don't know the exact percentage. You could be right, but when you have city government not paying taxes on its buildings, and then you have churches and schools and other nonprofits not paying taxes, then that tax burden is shared by the only remaining parcels. So what this project does is it takes a parcel which is city owned and off the tax rolls right now and puts it back on the tax roll, and that helps everybody else everybody. out. Everybody. So knowing this and knowing that you've made adjustments for the parking garage and the public restrooms and the affordable housings, what is there left that people are opposed to? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the million-dollar question, Guy Greco from Mid-Hudson Valley. Well, considerably more than a million-dollar question. <laughs> it's the $60 million yeah. question, yeah. I think some people are philosophically opposed to change, and they don't like the idea of a new big building coming to town because they like it just the way it is and don't want to see it change i i i, I have to guess that's yeah the reason. I, and, and you know what guy, the though, logic that doesn't that doesn't even but i think it really doesn't make that much sense but i think what's going on now a little bit of dotting the i's crossing the t's yeah i'm not i mean to say we're we think that 
we're on a good path. We think that we're going to be able to, you know, finalize this thing with the, you know, the school district and the county, um, and they're doing their homework. We're, we have to provide this type of information to them. Have uh, they had this information? Or we've been giving it to us. They asked for more. Um, difficulty with the school board, they're doing a lot of stuff right now. So they're right. the one. We right. have not the sat. Pandemic, they're certainly they're the only one that we have not sat. And, guy, to be of. clear, there's two different groups i think brad's talking about the decision makers and right. the the voting uh elected officials and yeah. boards yeah. that's a very different group than i was talking about when we were talking about who's opposed to it yeah. project opponents were there's, not there's we're some not project opponents them. that we can't please no matter what but yeah, in terms of the no, elected officials you're giving them hundred dollar bills that's the, the truth opposed. with that's anything that's, Scott, you're right. that's, so, that's who i was speaking and about and i'm surprised a, that there's enough of those people that it's it not there, there's not a lot of them it's oh, okay. they're loud they're just the loudest group oh, they see. came in they I come see. in with bullhorns to city meetings they're very they, good at what they do yeah they're, they're not by the way they're also not from here they're not from this community and, and my i'm speaking for myself scott harrington not the project <laughs> These people are not from the community. They're not from here. They're organized from an outside uh, influence to come in and stop. And to answer your question, they are opposed to people who are successful. Joe Benoit and Brad Jordan didn't start life successful. They built that. Uh, I'm, I can't speak to Joe. You're from the Poughkeepsie area. I, knew, I know your dad. Yeah. Um, but, but I've been a, a customer of the Jordan family. I've been a renter from the Jordan family, and my children have benefited from what the Jordan family has done for this community for 25 years. My son and daughter played sports on fields provided at no cost to the community by the Jordan family. Everybody goes with their hand. I bet you're the same in Poughkeepsie, I bet because I, I know your family is very uh, well thought of there. Um, you're bringing something to the table. You're not taking something away. And the support from within the community is tremendous. The opposition is from outside the community. Please, folks, don't let them influence what's going to happen to your community. Stand up. Take a stand. Call your alderman and call your school board representative and your county representative and tell them you want to see the Kingstonian built and I want it built now. I was in for an apartment, but it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. And and you KingstonianNY.net is where you can go to on our KingstonianNY.com. KingstonianNY.com. Go to the Google, type in Kingstonian, you'll find it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the um, and and we just to show that support that you were speaking about about ten days ago. You know, we kind of got word that you know you. The opponents are putting this letter writing campaign out there. You need to get people to get support. So Frank Campagna, Color Page, worked with us, and yeah. we kind of created something on our website that people could go on and just, you know, click on and a button. Share their support. Share their support. And we're up to, like, 500 people already, um, as opposed to 40-some. So uh, we may have we're against. Okay. Well, go ahead. You're on the air with Joe Benner and Brad Jordan. Uh, hi. Uh, Ralph calling. Um, I, I'm uh, quite convinced uh, of the... Um, your presentation is was excellent this morning, and um, I'm convinced that <laughs> you should be getting the pilot and you know right away, uh, no more delay. Um, so um, you mentioned making phone calls. If I had to make one phone call in, in your favor, uh, uh, what what would it be? Probably the school district. I mean, uh, we we the school's dealing with a lot right now, and we're extremely sympathetic to that. Fair so. deal, but we need to multitask here. We have yeah, a but you know, so, we, so we're so we're still moving along, but yeah, it's the we we have not been able to present our case. That's the only body that we have not been able to get in front of. You know, we've been able. There, there's people that have reservations at all levels of government as mm -hmm. as we start the presentation. But if you look at the success we've had, I think it's based on the numbers and the presentation that we can give them. Um, so we're hoping at some point once we do that with the school board and they get the information from us and are able to ask questions and you know this study that the county's doing we're obviously going to hand it to the school district we're we're comfortable that uh, we're convinced it's going to be it's going to be in our favor to show that and your and your and your numbers not, prove it out i mean uh, but to ralph's to ralph's point who do you who do you call call jim shaughnessy jim shaughnessy is the president of the kingston city school board um, okay. All your school board members, really. There's, you know, there's nine school board members. So uh, reach out to all your school board members. Um, okay, that's, um, we'll do. We'll th do. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph, and thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, call, also, please, uh, if you're listening to this uh, broadcast, uh, first of all, support your local businesses. Both of these gentlemen represent families who are in business locally and have been for generations. Mm -hmm. 
um, and give back to their community. That's important. That's why they're able to do something like this. And I'm going to guess it's why you want to do something like this. It isn't easy, is it, Joe? No, this is uh, <laughs> this has not been an easy one. If you Did you think it would be? I, I bet you didn't. I didn't think it would be easy. Nothing worthwhile in life is easy. Amen. If it, it just I don't, if it's sports, marriage, life, kids, anything worthwhile is hard work. Mm -hmm. I had no idea it would be this amount of meetings and this amount of boards and this amount of committees and then another committee and then another board we were talking about it yesterday yeah. it's been it's been a gauntlet yeah. but uh we're, we're pretty much there we're at the we're at the one yard line we're, really yeah. you think so i think we're, so we're at the we're, one yard we're line? three years in <laughs> three years in to get there and and we've seen over the course of where we started um elected officials have changed School board members have changed. Society's the changed. The IDA board has changed. So we, you know, we knew where we needed to start the process. We met with Friends of Historic Kingston. Right at the first meeting we ever had was we went to Friends of Historic Kingston. We said, okay, we know the challenges with the Teicher Project, the height of the building, um, what it looked like. So we had to blend in. Um, then from there, you know, we started dealing with the city. The city approached us on this. That's the only thing I assume everybody's aware. Joe and I were. Well, they're not aware. Well, tell so them. we, we were going to do something on our on my side of the road. Right. Joe is a customer of mine, and we have a great business relationship. Um, he owns the Old Orange County Country Club, which is now West Hills. West Hills, uh, he Middletown. Owns, yep. You know, obviously the stuff on the waterfront was already built and yep. had been completed before before we met Joe. We started working with him at, at West Hills, and then we went over to Poughkeepsie and did uh, Water Club water apartment club. project. Um, so. A very successful waterfront apartment complex, yeah, right? Yeah, nice. yeah. welcomed right. by the community. Very yeah. successful, yeah. benefiting right everybody. Yeah. Shadows. And so, we were going to do something on our side of the road, and the mayor approached us and said, "Hey, you know, we're still trying to do something with this parking garage site and the synergies. You know, between having both parcels, you don't have to go up above that this current street line. Um, the parking availability in the plaza that we could take advantage of. Con where do we park the construction, for the cars for the construction workers, the displaced parking we're going to lose when we build that new parking garage, um, all that stuff. We're going to run shuttle bus, put the cars down by the ball field. To put yep. it that. So it doesn't disrupt my tenants down there, and it also doesn't – it gives you know people that work and, and shop in that area a means to get up into that district during the construction phase. It, it went from a smaller, smaller scale, maybe 40 or 50 apartment project on – property that Brad's family owns to a transformative project that will affect the entire uptown business district in a very positive way. I mean, 40, 40 or so apartments would have been a good thing. Would have been nice. Would have been yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. But it wouldn't have provided any new parking. It wouldn't have provided all the new jobs. It wouldn't have provided the sales tax revenue. It wouldn't have provided the public park. It wouldn't have provided the affordable housing. It wouldn't have provided a, all of the other things that this project brings. And number one of which is the, the, you know, the, the parking infrastructure. We could have relied on the parking infrastructure that was already in it was place. Already there. Ours, yeah. 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 And but it doesn't change. So we we got involved in this process, um, not looking for this. It wasn't as if we came to town and said, "We want to build a parking garage." Well, well, right. Well, that, that, but it's important that to note, though, we went to the city, we went to the school, we went to the IDA That's board, right. we went to the county exec. I mean, we hit every single person three years ago or a group, right? Correct. Um, and said, "This is this is the structure we're looking at," and you know, as a partner with the city of Kingston. And we kind of said, everybody said, yeah, okay, that seems to make sense. Let's go. The project has changed. Back then, it didn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that it has right, now. Right. But so is some of the groups and people. So it's not like we didn't have any commitment from them, but the concept was everybody was willing to move forward based on the concept. Um, and here we are three years later. Had you anticipated in any way that it was going to be? No. I, no. And, yeah, I, I mean, because I a year, they year approached, and a half. Yeah, I, did not, and, yeah. I, I did not think three years. And, you know, the secret By the way, process, we took our time. We did everything right. We dotted our I's and crossed our T's during the secret process. Um, you know, and they, again, as I said, the one thing about the opponents, they're pretty good at what they do. They're yeah. a smaller group of they're people. They're well-organized. Well-organized. Well well-funded. Uh, they're well-funded well by outside political organizations. Yeah. Uh, and just so folks understand, three years, not three free years, you've paid a lot of money to get where you are today well, an without a shovel in the ground. And so have you. By the way, these yeah, lawsuits. Well, good point. And yeah. These lawsuits. So, city, government, county government, and the school—they have costs associated with these studies and and, and their spending lawsuits. their time and right. and yeah. right. and and in the lawsuits that are taking place, it's not just Joe and I that are being sued and our businesses that are being sued. It's the city of Kingston being sued, the Common Council, the Planning Board, Cuba. the state, the Kingston Uptown Business Association is yeah. being sued. Who sues the Uptown Business Association? The state of New York is being Neil sued. Neil Bender, that's who sues uh, the but, Cuba. But, but. The, but the state of New York is also being sued through SHPO. So right. it's 
So we have legal expenses, but so do you. We're all who, yeah. who So pays we have an outside just so people understand this, you have a, you have someone who's not from here, an outside developer who has come in and purchased a bunch of property in Kingston and, and left it dilapidated and in the condition that it was. That company is suing our local developers and our city and our local business representatives to try to stop this uh, project from going forward. Why? Because it's going to be a successful project and it's going to, to add to, to the character of the city and this outside development agency does not want that. They don't want success locally. They don't want us to succeed on our own. They want to control it. They want to stop it. They want to use certain parcels as tax write-offs. They want to deteriorate Uptown Kingston, not benefit Uptown Kingston. Wow. And I'm being very honest about this. This is my opinion, not the, not the guys here at the table, but I've done my own research. I've, I've read about what's happened in some of these companies in New York City, uh, some of these buildings. You need to speak to your public representatives. You need to speak to your aldermen, your county uh, uh, legislators, your mayor, your county executive, and your school board members. And you need to let them know what you'd like to have in this community for your children for the future. Do you want a project that works? Do you want something that benefits the entire community? Do you want more parking? Do you want bathrooms? Jeez, as basic as do you want a bathroom while you're shopping uptown without asking the guy at Dallas Hot Wheels, hey, can I use your bathroom? Or festivals. I mean, it's, it, it, that public plaza is going to be a gathering spot up there. and, and It or, already is a gathering spot. Yeah. I mean, I hope people understand. If there's a parade in Kingston, by the way. That's where I'll start. It, it has for years. Yep. Either started or ended at Kingston Plaza. Yeah. Right. And no cost. Nobody's being charged for that. The, you know, the, 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 the Children's Day Parade, the fireworks, the carnival, all these things occur out of the goodness uh, uh, of the hearts uh, of Joe Benura and Brad Jordan and their respective communities and the support that they give. They're from your community. Joe, you grew up in Poughkeepsie, right? I actually grew up in, in Newburgh. Oh, but well, Newburgh. Okay, yep, yeah, the Newburgh New waterfront. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's no problem. That's I, I met your dad down yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, I grew up in Newburgh. I took the boat down a time or two, I right? did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I probably had a cocktail, an adult <laughs> beverage or two <laughs> down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I grew up in Newburgh, went to NFA, public school, went, went away to college, um, got a degree, came back to town and started working with my family business. Yeah. And uh, been How big was it? That, how, how, how has it grown over the years? Since so it's, I mean, my, it started with nothing. You know, my grandparents were immigrants. My parents started the first Perkins Pancake House in 1972 in New York State. Really? Yep. My dad was a cook. My mom was the hostess. And that's how they started in business. And um, they grew that's to... They actually lived in Kingston. They, lived, they got married in Kingston. Yeah. My parents got married here. And they lived in Kingston. Um, my dad worked as an accountant at the time when he was here in Kingston. And then um, what was my parents, my grandparents moved uh, from Brooklyn to Newburgh. And so anyway, when my, after my parents got married and they started their first restaurant, they bought a piece of property in Newburgh and built the first Perkins. It's right next to where the Lexus Diner is now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then um, they grew to six Perkinses, ended up selling those, started Anthony's Pier 9 Catering. And then when my brother and I came back from college, uh, the only thing our family business, the two businesses we really had were Anthony's Pier 9 and the Poughkeepsie Grand Hotel. And we had about 400 employees between those two businesses. And then we grew the company to 1,200 employees um, between my father, my sister, my brother, and myself, and nine locations. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, work hard every day, do the right thing by your community, do the right thing by your employees, do the right thing by your family, and usually good things. 1,200 employees. Pre-COVID. Yeah, un understood. Yeah, right. uh, th that's understood. But but that's a significant. You've got to be one of the most significant employers in Dutchess County, as Herzog's and, and Kingston Plaza is one of the most significant employers and taxpayers in Ulster County and in the city of Kingston. I know these are these are premier. These are premier properties we're talking about. Right. These this are, isn't. These aren't slumlords. West Hills is, is gorgeous. Yeah, uh, all of them. I mean, Anthony's all of them. Pier Nine, the Poughkeepsie Grand Hotel. Come yeah. on. Everybody wants to get married at the Poughkeepsie Grand Hotel. I'm jealous because we have an event. Everybody rental business. does get married. Yeah, we want them on our side of the river. They want to go to the Poughkeepsie Grand. Thank you. Yeah, it's it. so um, it, it, I ended up becoming more of the construction development wing as we grew our company. And then we branched out into, you know, multiple different types of projects, you know, multifamily housing. But the Kingstonian is, is a little bit of everything we've done before. It has a hotel. It's it has really a, a combination, right? It has a parking garage. We have a parking garage. The Poughkeepsie Grand, I don't know if many of the listeners know, it sits on top of a three-story parking garage yeah. that was owned by the city of Poughkeepsie, wasn't maintained, 
ha- oh. went up for auction. We had to buy it, and we had to put six million dollars into fixing the parking garage so that the hotel didn't fall down. Mm-hmm. Because the hotel sits on top of the parking garage, so yeah. we know what it's like to operate a parking garage in the middle of an urban area. We get it. And the loss that you incur and by the loss we one. incur every single day. Yeah. The parking garages are not a winning proposition in terms of right. economics. If they were government, we'd build them. Correct, but they're important infrastructure. It is you gotta park. You have to park. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as, yeah. as much as we want to say everyone is you know pedestrian friendly and can walk everywhere, people still need to get to Kingston somehow. <laughs> and some of the people <laughs> need that somewhere li- to leave their car. Need somewhere <laughs> to leave the car. Um, and uh, that infrastructure is needed. You can only carry so much home on your bicycle. That's so true. if you're going to buy a few things, you're going to need your car to drive it back home. Right. Uh, you know, Scott, you brought up a lot of good points. And the one thing <clears throat> thank you, I still remember, no, but I, the, the process we've gone through three years I going back to guys, the, the, would we have done it if we knew we were going to be at this yeah, stage three years? Yeah, that's Probably. a great the question. The answer is no. no. I mean, yeah. it's it's um, a, it's and the excitement. Definite. You don't need it. By the way, you don't need to do this. You know what? You're this both is successful a, already. This yeah. is a to me, it's a great project for the, and obviously it's self-serving because I, you know, linking the two important business districts together. But as you speak, spoke earlier, the, for our kids, is that well, this is going to be right. great for Kingston. What is, it's going to be, you know, one of the landmark buildings, and it is going to blend in. We've, we've, we're going to make, you know, ensure that it's going to blend in based on the construction materials that we're going to be using. People can see that online. They can yeah, go look at it. Changed yep. completely from where we did it. But the excitement we had when we when it first started. Joe came up with his brother and Patrick Page, <clears throat> another one of the uh, developers with us, and it was a Friday night. We walked around all the different shops and restaurants uptown, yeah. and just for them to get a feel. But like we were just kind of committing. It was right after we had met with the mayor and a couple of the council members. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what I liked about it, and I know the mayor and some of these council members, uh, we were bringing their organization in partnership with us to Kingston to do some of these great projects you're talking Public about. Public-private partnership. Yeah. And right. and getting them here. And, and we weren't looking at just doing this project. This was going to be our project to start. But the excitement we all had was, uh, and then we're going to talk about some other things. You know, mm-hmm. some yeah. of the council members talked about some projects they'd like to get in, have done in Kingston. Um, the mayor's mayor Probably brought three up Three years some, put a damper on that to any well, degree? I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> we thought I, mean, we, I can't speak for Joe, but I, I, I we think thought we'd be almost done with the construction yeah, by then. I, I thought I'd be living in there. The next thing. Yeah. I thought I'd be living yeah. in there by well, and, now. And I think we told you last time around, it's 18 to 24 months construction time, depending on whether we hit one winter or two winters. So even after we get these approvals, you know, it's you have two years to build. build. It's going to take two years to build it. 18 months to, to 24 months. Right. Uh, uh, and that's, I, I think that's a very aggressive time timeline to build a project that size. But you have experience in this. Yeah. You're not from out of town. You're from here. You've done this Many times, both of you start you're on one side of the street. But yeah. the and I think the government officials at all levels now are seeing that you know the process. Something needs to change with the process. Right. Oh, it, it, what I was I was talking to uh, one of the officials yesterday, and I said, you know, take off my hat as me being part of it right now. If you look at this, and you have other significant projects you want to get done in Ulster County, not just the city of Kingston, but in Ulster County, anywhere, you have another transformative project. You have to find a way to make this process. A little bit more streamlined. Mm-hmm. Not saying that it doesn't need not a hard look. Nope, nope, not cutting corners. Not cutting corners, but it can be done. You know, there's a lot of municipalities in out. New York State that have figured a way to they use a template to have it. They do all of the eyes dotted and t's crossed right. before you, advance, you spend any money on yeah, it. Yeah. Right. It, developers need to have some certainty and some ability to plan because that's the. There's one thing that we're short on in life is time. So can't buy more of it. Can't buy more the only thing you can't buy more so of. So if you know a project is going to take um, 90 days, 120 days, a year, year and a half to get approved, okay, you can plan for that. When you think it's going to take a year but it takes three, it's really hard to plan for that. Yeah. Joe, I worked for Tom Perna, and I bet both of you know Tom Perna. He was the developer of uh, in East, AVR. Uh, AVR acquisitions at Yonkers. They were developing the, the plot in East Kingston, uh, going to put 1,300 uh, condos and retail space down there. Uh, I worked for the man for 10 years. They were into the project for 15 years, could not get uh, ahead here despite spending millions and millions and millions of dollars. And guess what? They walked away. Yeah. They sold the property, and now it's off the tax rolls. They were paying taxes on that property, that 500 acres, for 15 years trying to develop it. And out-of-towners fought it, and it left. We cannot allow that to happen to the Kingstonian project. We need this project in Uptown Kingston. And I have firsthand experience with a developer that tried. Big, deep pockets, millions of dollars, spread the money around, supported everything, did all the right things. Great project. Too much opposition. They don't need it. They have developments around the world. They don't need this. 
and they walked away, and it was sold to Scenic Hudson, and now it's off the tax rolls. We yeah. can't let that happen. I, I think that people need to, instead of just grabbing onto a catchphrase that's supposed to represent a cause, if, you know, it's not the most exciting thing to do your homework, but I think if they're presented with the stuff that, that you told us here, yeah. and they look at it, and they just spend the time to read through it to maybe answer the questions they had, rather than just jump on a cause because it seems popular. And think of the long game that you yeah. talked about. Yeah. Think not just of, oh, it might be inconvenient for me when I'm driving. Listen, there, there may not be any reason for you to drive uptown if it continues the way it is now, ever. And you'll have plenty of parking when these places close. Yeah. And COVID has sped up that, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. exponentially. It should be on the Freeman. Uh, it's because it's the only newspaper we have here, but uh, uh, this should, and, and I, I don't want to spend your money for you, sorry, <laughs> but, but <laughs> I know you've spent a lot well, already. Well, well, you know, so along those lines, we, we were asked by actually some of the uh, taxing jurisdictions not, not to make it political. Like, we've made our argument to the, yeah. to the elected officials. We've tried. And, and we've tried to stay out of the press, try, and we give them that information. And I, and, and I mean this when I say it. I, and I think Joe does do have a newfound absolute admiration and respect for our elected officials because they're the You're ones. So patient. Well, but Scott, let me tell you, they're the ones we've seen it firsthand that, that firsthand that have to listen or have yeah. to answer to the misinformation. Yeah. Joe and I don't. So yeah. if, if someone puts something out there and, and a listener or a reader believes it, it's our elected officials that get that they phone get call, call and say, why are you approving this when this is the case? Or that, and they're the ones that have to say, no, that's not true. So, Essentially, it started with the city of Kingston, and now we're doing it with the county and school. We need to create this information for them as much as yeah. anybody else because yeah. they have to defend their vote. And they're, you know, getting the... the but, but the people, Brad... And we want, no, and we want to get it out. So we're, right. that's why we're driving everybody to right. our website. We're, we're, it's we, a very small uh, group of people that are opposed to this. They're very vocal, they're very well organized, and they're very well financed. That's why we're here today, right? Yeah. That so is, we're, yeah. Yeah. And, and you could possibly continue to be, be more today. transparent than you are. Cat, it's right. not like anything's no, being hidden here. And the information's very, available very, if you look for it. Very important point. And, we, sure. and that's the, the opposite to try to say that we've hid. There's nothing that has been hidden. Even stuff that's not required to be disclosed, we have disclosed to the elected officials. Now the county's going to examine it again and spend Absolutely. another $15,000 in taxpayer dollars to re-examine these numbers that are already publicly available, that See, have already been provided. that's where streamlining come in, rather than this duplication of effort yeah. over and over. We could have done that at the very beginning yeah. and had it and available to the school, city, and county would have been great. We, we did that. We hired we, a yeah, company. We, we were told to hire a company and do an economic study, hire a third party and do a study. So we you did. did. And then we provided it to the IDA, and then the IDA takes their own software and runs our numbers through their software. And so then they had to concur that our numbers were they're in agreement, but but now another study is deemed necessary and at taxpayer okay. expense. By the way, well, at tax it, to your point, point earlier, at taxpayer expense, we have no problem providing the numbers because we know our numbers are good. Yeah, and it's the information is already here. It's all here. Right. The city did their homework and, and you know they did their due diligence. They asked all the questions. We County thought, employees, uh, CPAs, modified. let them yeah. let them go through the the. the we met the with thing. the assessor, the mayor, the full council, every single council member, and. Yeah answered every single question they checked the math they checked the cost that we were showing and we we got out of there 8-0 and we're, you know. we're, we're coming to the end yeah, people i want people to be able to go to your website S say it again kingstonianny.com kingstonian kingston and oh. stonian kingstonian ny.com that's right you can see these numbers there john yes. Yeah, yeah, you all, can all see these, all this information that's been provided. We're going to leave these. I would urge everyone to take 10 minutes. I was going to say, leave that with us and I'll put it on our informed, website as well. It'll Have be an on our website opinion. too. Yeah. And in, that's right. Because an informed opinion is a correct opinion. That's right. Yeah. Uh, call your alderman. Call the mayor. Call the county executive. Call your legislators. And call your school board member and president, Jim Shaughnessy, and let them know there was a letter available online that you could. Uh, button, you is it still on. there? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. If At Kingstonian. NewYork.com. You can show your support. Get these letters, and I got a response from Jim Shaughnessy to the letter. Uh, yes. You know, and then that, that's in addition to the 30 plus letters we got from business owners, civic leaders. We had several. Who is in favor written. of it? Yes. The oh, yeah. Chamber of Commerce is in favor. Of it. Everybody's in favor of it. I want to say thank you to Joe Benura and Brad Jordan for your contributions to your community prior to this. You're good guys. You're just good guys. And their contributions to KCR. And a big supporter of KCR, air. which we appreciate. <laughs> Support the Kingstonian. Thank you, folks, for listening. Thanks, Guy Greco, Mid Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union, for co hosting today. God bless you. God bless America. Lawrence, take us away. 
Thank you for sharing the morning with us and participating in Kingston Community Radio, KCR.